Places up for grabs in finals weekend at the end of November, and these are the 10 players fighting it out for those places. Defending champion, the Rocket, Ronnie O'Sullivan, Mark Williams, John Higgins, Ding Jinhui, Neil Robertson, Ali Carter, Sean Murphy, Judd Trump, Matthew Stevens, and the whirlwind, Jimmy White, who is in action tonight, but in our second semi-final. First up, Mark Williams takes on Ali Carter, and as you can see, there's the whirlwind up against Ding Junhui. And as always in the Premier League, the two winners meet a bit later on. Uh, good to see you. We're at that stage now in the Premier League, week six, where defeat tonight really could end your dreams of Premier League glory. Former world number six, Mike Hallett, joins me now. Good to see you, Mike. Um, talking to players that are up against it, if you like, tonight. J uh, excuse me, Jimmy White's playing his second, uh, his third Premier League this season, yet to win a frame. You get the feeling tonight, if he doesn't win even a semi-final, that is curtains for Jimmy. Uh, I don't think he's got no chance. He's got no chance if he doesn't win. He must win tonight. He's got to have a good result. I think he knows that in his own mind. Is there a reason for Jimmy's decline, if you like, in this season's Premier League? You look at the format, the shot clock, everything seems to suit his game. He just hasn't really started yet, has he? Yeah, yeah, yeah he's struggled. I, 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 he probably would say the same thing. He has struggled this year, which is... I'm sure he was looking forward to the event when he was invited into it. And uh, unfortunately for him, it hasn't quite happened mm. yet but perhaps we might see the best of him. Not yet, not yet, it still could happen. Let's look at the league table, let's remind ourselves, because it's not just Jimmy that's up against it tonight. His opponent, Ding Junhui, also in desperate need of a win tonight. There's uh, Ding, ninth, Jimmy's tenth as well. Any surprises for you, Mike, in the way the Premier League's shaping up? Because Judd Trump, although he only played his first game last week, for me, um, he's five and a half to one, I think third or even fourth favourite to win the Premier League this season. I think wonderful odds there for Judd. Yeah, he looked good, didn't he, last week? He really did. But um, it's such a fantastic field, you know. They're all star players. And uh, it's not easy. It really isn't easy. They're all star quality. And you've got to definitely be on your game. And um, if you're not, then you find yourself down at the bottom, unfortunately. Ding Junhui, one of those players, has won everything in the game apart from the World Championship. And everyone knows he's, it's only a matter of time before he does that. In the Premier League, not really done it yet. Is there a reason for that? No, again, I mean, we've said it's a long, long season ahead. The, the boys already have played a lot of Stuka. But, um, you know, Ding's a quality player. all these lads here, we keep mentioning. But um, sometimes they sparkle and sometimes they don't. It's, it's very difficult to keep bringing it up all the time, dragging it up and getting in the top form. But it's all about consistency, especially mm. in this format in the league. You have to be consistent to do well and have a chance to get to the semi-finals. First semi-final, uh, Mark Williams against Ali Carter. Mark looking to win his second event in this Premier League calendar. Um, if he does that, obviously, you think it's one foot in the semi-finals. He's been superb, hasn't he, so far? Well, he has, and I think it's a difficult one, difficult one to call this evening. I mean, this, the, again, they're both well-balanced. Um, I don't know which way that one's going to go, but uh, I'm definitely looking forward to the two matches, and they're, they're certainly interesting, the way uh, the league is at the moment. Ali looked good in his first appearance, picked up four points. I'm going to ask both of these players when they come out. I just want to get your view on it, because, we're, yeah. because the format's changed in the Premier League now. Sometimes players might be playing for frames which are then points, if that makes sense. Do you think that that will be on their mind if they get to the final and get beat, they've still picked up four points? Well, they have, but sometimes they're possibly trying to get in the back door. And I don't, I'm sure these lads don't want to do that. They want to get their own merit. And uh, three nils are great, but it's not always possible. Three twos will be fine. So it's a question of picking up, yes, as many points as you can, but a win is a win for a few of them at the moment. Okay. Let's have a look what the bookies make of it tonight. Obviously, they very rarely get it wrong, don't they? Mark Williams, odds on 7-4. to four. You have to put on 7 to win for Ali Carter. Just over even money, 5-4. to four. And then Ding Junhui, uh, that's 5-1 to one on against the whirlwind. Jimmy White, over threes. Three and a third to one, 10-3. to three. 
five to one on for Ding Jung Wei. I mean, stranger things have happened in snooker. Well, that's amazing, really amazing. Five to one on, and uh, well, perhaps Jimmy might uh, just pull up a surprise this evening. Who knows? But the other match should be a cracker as well. But um, I'm sure Jimmy will want to perform tonight mm. uh, for his fans and everybody here, and for himself as well. Okay, who's going to be in the final? Who's going to win it? <laughs> you always put me on the spot here. Uh, first one is difficult to call. Uh, I know the lads around the back watching. <laughs> Um, they can't hear you, they can't oh, okay, hear what yeah, you're saying. Cheers. Of course they can't. I don't know, I don't know. Uh, they're hard to split. 3-2, um, three, 2, three, two Ali. Oh, you, you've gone great in-depth analysis. Brilliant. I'll let you get back in the commentary box. We'll see you in a minute. Cheers. Time to meet the players. First up, the wonderful Ali Carter. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome. We are packed to the raft as a complete sellout here at the Biddle Leisure Centre in Stoke-on-Trent. Barry Hearns Maximum Sport proudly present the Premier League Snooker. Sponsored here by PartyPoker.com and a very warm welcome to our viewers joining us live on Sky Sports HD. The best of five frames, the 20 second shot clock the referee in charge of the action is Mr. Paul Collier. Time to meet the players. Would you please welcome from Essex, the Welsh and Shanghai champion, it's Ali Carter! Good to see you, Ali. Your second appearance now in this season's Premier League. Do you enjoy your first outing? Yeah, I did enjoy the first outing. Obviously, it was a bit of a bizarre way to lose to Ronnie in the end, missing three times, but um, you know, that's the way it goes sometimes. I'm looking forward to tonight. You picked up four points. Is that a good night's work? Yeah, I think four out of a possible six is you know, always not a bad evening, so you know, I, hopefully I'll do better tonight, but we'll see. Well, I was going to ask, would you take that now? Because I just mentioned to Mike there, we're a, a very bizarre format in the Premier League where every time you win a frame, that gives you another point and obviously gets you closer to, to finals weekend. Would you take four points now if it was offered to you? Um, I don't know. Offer it to me. And I'll <laughs> no, I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. Four points, like I said, is a good result, but obviously you're looking to win, so that's what we're here to do. And tonight's match against uh, one of the game's best ever players, recently knocked off the top spot by uh, Mark Selby. But Mark Williams, wonderful player, tough game tonight. Yeah, Mark's obviously won everything there is to win in the game. Um, great player. Um, so, you know, we have to watch this way and see what happens. Best of luck. Ali Carter, everyone. Thanks, Ali. <laughs> And his opponent is Mark Williams. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Would you please welcome the former two-time champion of the world, the pride of Wales, Mark Williams! Uh, a win tonight will give you two victories in the Premier League um, and one foot firmly in the door marks semi-finals. Not bad? Yeah, victory probably gets me in the semi-finals, but, uh, you know, it's a lot harder to do than just say that. But, you know, hopefully, fingers crossed, I can get it. Are you chewing? Yeah, mint Dorman. <laughs> Glad I asked now. I didn't expect that. Cool. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'll make sure I shake hands with Paul Collier before the start of the game. Um, your opponent tonight, um, also doing very well in the Premier League. I asked him the question, I'll ask, I'll ask you as well. I'm not going to do my hair tonight. Uh, if four points was offered to you, would you take it? Because it, in theory, will get you very close to getting into the semi final. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, I think probably Ali would take four points as well, out of six. Um, yeah, definitely take that. And Ali, very tough opponent. It's not going to be easy tonight. 
No, they're all difficult. I mean, you only got to look at the league to see how tight it is. And uh, I don't think you'll find out who the semi finalists until the last game. Best of luck. Yeah. <laughs> Mark Williams, everyone. Messy stuff, this snooker. Let's hand over to our boys in the box. Mike Callett, first up, the wonderful Phil Yates. Thanks, Andy. Mark Williams, extra strong. Ali Carter, pretty good himself. And so it begins. The second half of the, Thank you, the first league frame. table in this Mark year's Williams Premier League. Today. Who will get through to the semi-finals at the end of it and make those playoffs at the end of November at Hopton-on-Sea. Two things we can say for definite at the start of the evening. One, if Jimmy White were to lose his semi-final, he would be out of the tournament. Also, Williams, Carter and indeed Ding could end tonight at the top of the table. Well, great opening pot there from the Englishman. One. Great cue in from off the back cushion. It's handy that Andy likes to put me on the spot, Phil, does he? How can you split these two? It's going to be a fascinating evening. Just got there. I think he has yet. Yeah. One red move. Touching ball. Great to perfection. The only problem here now, Mark, is for Mark to say it's touching ball, so Ali can put Mark in some trouble. He didn't want to sound defeatist, Ali Carter, and understandably so, but I think if he were to win this semi-final and pick up a frame or two in the final, even if he were to lose it, he'd still be looking good for making those last four knockout phase. I think he'd be delighted with that, Phil. <coughs> As we've said, the start of this year's Premier League is a quality field. We've had some quality snooker already. And uh, you just can't see who's going to be there in the last four. Well, where's this red going? It could be very close. Well, it might be now. <coughs> Can he, can he hold for the black here? He's playing it. Oh, that's a great shot to play a dead weight. If anything, just a little bit short of pace, but he's OK. Well played. With the first red, Williams had to trust the bed of the table. The cue ball did not deviate Eight. in the slightest. When a table's brought into an arena, straight out of the blocks, as it were, sometimes it no. takes a while to settle. Obviously, you don't have this chance in the Premier League, and I think the table fitters generally do a very good job indeed. Absolutely. It takes these lines two or three hours to really, well, probably more to set up. Not as much to take them down, but they want to get them spot on. 16. So you could see there, as Phil said, with that red that uh, Mark dropped, well, the cue ball he played, just to play that red over the corner. It didn't move. Oh, that, uh, 17. that was a absolutely bang in the middle. <laughs> could do with this pink going on to the green spot. We might leave this red on. We could mask it now. 23. Still got this thin cut to the left corner. This is not guaranteed. Mark Williams, 23. Yeah, a little bit disappointed with the position aside from the pink. Not too much the replay, but I think he might have left Ali this red on. Because it. 
I was chatting with Mark before the start of the match and he was saying the 20 second shot clock it's fine when you're in amongst the balls has no problems with that at all it's when it's a situation where you have to think tactically sometimes he thinks you need a little more time than 20 seconds and he feels a little rushed and proof of the puddings in the eating there well Mark hit that half ball they've got a couple of time extensions of course the frame but um, yes it's the awkward situations that do take the time but normally these guys all the lads in the in the league this year oh, he's getting a trot on all the lads in the league this year can play pretty much under that 20 second shot clock but on this occasion he need to take a time extension certain players naturally adapt others take a while to adapt I think the big success story in this tournament so far this year having struggled with the shot clock in the past is Neil Robertson Green, good target down there to get in behind. He's just clipped the green, always wanting to try and get in behind them. pot onto the right corner here, the one just above the pink. Well, he's hit it on the thin side for the safety. But it's come out from amongst the pack, and I wonder whether Mark might be tempted by that one. I think he is. He could possibly get onto the black here if he drops it in. He's played the safety. The sensible shot from the veteran. I know it's hard to believe when you're talking about Mark Williams, but he's 36 years of age now. That really is veteran status in snooker. Let's not forget for where he was in the rankings a couple of seasons ago, you know, originally 43 in the world. He's done tremendously well to get back in the top echelons and, and for some uh, little time, provisionally world number one. Great achievement. Foul and a miss. Might go back. Let's have a look at this one then. Well, he didn't miss it by much. Back. Yes, he's just going to put a little bit of pressure on Mark here. If he plays the same shot again, of course, and misses again, then the pressure's really on. Remember what Ali did against Ronnie O'Sullivan in the final frame. Well, actually, was it 3-1? Yes, it cost him not just the frame, but also the match. A remarkable finish to the that particular evening. Now then, he's missed it again. That oh, will go back. Ali Carter four. Well, of course, we know the rule. He will be warned by our referee, Paul Collier, here. He has to hit a red this time. Otherwise, he'll lose the frame. He's got to hit a red. I would be astounded if Carter did, or should I say Williams did, what Carter did in Doncaster a couple of weeks ago. No, he's playing it much thicker four ball can't blame him <laughs> already taken one extension in this frame Yes, if you weren't with us in Doncaster a couple of weeks ago, Carter was 2-1 down against Ronnie O'Sullivan in the final up there. Mr. Reddy could see directly three consecutive occasions, and that was that. 3-1, handshake, thank you very much. Well, I was astounded that he played it the third time when he did, Phil, because obviously it was much all over. But in the first way, fair enough. But there, there's the occasion there with the shot clock where Ali was just rushed slightly, played a poor safety, and allowed Mark to take the red on, but... He's been a little bit unlucky on the positional side. Reset the clock, please. 
Now, Paul Collier, the referee, has used his discretion there because he couldn't find the rest. That wasn't the player's fault, although the seconds were draining away. Collier realised that Williams, Williams had been disadvantaged by his own inability to locate the rest. It's two at the other end. Hang on. Oh, there's a bonus. I don't think he intended that, but he'll take it. And just that little what? nudge on the brown as well. Well, he's played on the red just at the top of the pack there, and that looks perfect. Five. Six. Making his debut in the Premier League this year, Ali Carter. Always wanted to be involved, never quite did enough. But winning the Shanghai Masters at the start of last season basically booked his ticket. He's won a couple of world ranking events. The other one was the 2009 Welsh Open. 5 3 down he was after the first session against Joe Swale from Northern Ireland. And then when play resumed, he won six consecutive frames. Well and no one could have played much better than he did that night. Hardly missed a ball. Thirteen. Well, he's got the perfect angle now to go into them if he wishes. Nice contact. But he's just come uh, away from them slightly. Still has his red to the left centre. 20. <laughs> 21. Until you actually go down right next to the table and take a look at the cut of the middle pocket, you don't realise how tight they are. Earlier on tonight, I was just looking down the, the line there. If a player has a yellow off its spot with the white in the D, it should be an easy shot on these tables. It takes all the potting. It's about a quarter of a pocket that you're looking at. It really is an acute angle. 23. Twenty-four. Good chance here for Ali then to take this opening frame. Just stun up for these reds into the opposite corner. Thirty one. Thirty two. <coughs> It's just overrun that one slightly. You might have to play a little cannon into them here. I'm not sure whether you can hold the red, the cue ball for the reds. Well, you can hold it, the cue ball. That's OK. But of course, the one nearest the pink won't pot. So you'll have to concentrate on those on the right-hand side 59. of the table. Especially if you want to put Mark in the snooker's required stage at this 40. visit. Nicely played. Three pots away from putting the frame safe. Time extension. And forced to use his second and final time extension of the frame. Yeah, he's having to refuse the pot here because it's awkward. That's why he's playing the safety. Ali Carter, 47. Again, evidence there once more that you don't have much time to make up your mind as to what you want to play. And of course, you have to get the rest out, the extended rest or the spider. No time. I think there we could say almost for sure that had he had unlimited time, he would have taken the pot on. No doubt. Well, 
and he nearly sneaked it in behind the pink. It was a gathering shot. Chance here for Mark though, this pulse. Well played. Well, he's so good at those. Well, he's probably is the best single ball potter in the game. And that's what you need to get in. Yes, I, th I think there are three candidates for best single ball potter in the game. Really? And all of them are left-handed. Neil Robertson, the man at the table, Mark Williams, and of course we mustn't forget Judd Trump. Could be going for the cross double hit. Oh, he went for the frame there because he's taken the other red off the cushion. Mark I'm Williams not too three. sure about that one. He had to guarantee the pot. All or nothing. And from Williams's perspective, it's the latter. One. Well, he chose to have a go at them, trying to win the frame at that visit, but I think it might have cost him this opening frame. Carter, 35 ahead, 35 points on the table. So just this most simple of reds to effectively take a 1-0 lead. Seven. Seven. At Doncaster two weeks ago, he beat Ding 3 0 in their semi final up in South Yorkshire. Breaks of 30, 44, 50, 70, 30. and 91. Very impressive. And first impressions here, despite that miss, he's and up for this as well. 30. And the frame. Indeed, Mark Williams concedes, and so oh, the man with the pilot's license is off to a flyer. Ali Carter won. The twice world champion, nil. And then there were four. Saturday night sees Wales face France. Then Sunday, it's Australia, New Zealand. The Rugby World Cup semi-finals this Saturday and Sunday. Live and available in HD on Sky Sport 1. I always thought pretending to lose my virginity would be a little more special. Uh, Brandon told me what you did for him. That maybe you could do the same for me. A small favor. Oh! Leads to a big rumor. For the grand finale? Yeah. What? Now everyone is talking, and Olive is going from anonymous to infamous. We need to get her the hell out of here. You're going down, Olive. High school gossip taken to a whole new level. Easy A, 8.30 Sunday on Sky Movies. The game is over, and Zimbabwe win the series. Black Cat's Tour of Zimbabwe, live Sky Sport. Welcome back to Bidolf Valley Leisure Centre, where Mark Williams went for the jugular in the first frame, took on the double, knowing he would dislodge another red as well, hoped to clear up. In fact, all he did was leave the penultimate red on for his opponent, Ali Carter. And that's why the man from Essex has drawn first blood. He'll be pleased with the way the first frame went, Mike, especially the 47 break he made win way through it. Yeah, it did, and we're talking about the, the shot clock. You know, that red into the right corner. Thank if you, If he'd had a normal frame. time and a normal Ali match, Carter then the um, he would have definitely gone for that red. We'd have got the long tackle out, extended rest, whatever, extended spine, but didn't have the time. That's why he chose to play the safety. But it doesn't matter. He got the first frame on the board. Surprised that Mark played that cross double the way he did. He could have avoided the red on the side cushion, but as you say, went for the jugular. Didn't work out, but long way to go. There's a bit of a loose break off shot there from Ali Carter, especially at this level. You must get the cue ball to that back cushion. 
otherwise you see those go in as clean as clean can be cracking queuing from Williams well looking to put right here that uh, I think the black is available here if you just get high on it. Yeah, that will go if you get the white high. A little bit short of pace, might have to play back for the blue here. Well. Elected for the pink to the centre. Looks like it's going behind the pack here. And he's had a quick look at the black, but he's got the angle to screw into the reds and get them all open if he wants to play that. 19. Now, is he on this black? I think 20. he's gone too far. He played the contact on the second red. Can he see enough of it? He's trying to kick this in with side. I'm not sure. Doesn't like it. Mark Williams, 20. Well, it's not a bad shot considering we rushed it a little bit. He must have nominated the yellow quite quietly. I didn't hear him call out a colour. Nor me. He's left it on. I think he might have got a bit of a kick there. He didn't like the contact. Well, it didn't seem so. Just a, a bad shot. Only science to me, the Williams body language doesn't seem all that positive. Seems a little flustered. Yeah, and I don't know whether Ali's been a little bit lucky here. Oh, now then, can he see this to pot it? No. Yeah, I think Ali just about got away with that one. Right. Could have done with that cue ball, just coming down the table a little bit more, but he's got a good angle to get into the pack. But he's got to be careful here because there's a plant on to the right corner. Well, he's not playing anything, he's playing a safety. That surprised me. Ali Carter, one. He's trying to lay a Chinese snooker there, make it awkward for Mark, but he can get the cue in there. Oh, he, he did clip them. It was a fine one. I wonder if there's a possible plant here to the right corner. Uh, no. I was looking at those two reds actually, but it didn't seem so. Well, they're open now, and he doesn't want the kiss on the yellow. This might be cuttable. That's a ball shot from Ali Carter. Blue on its spot, pink and black in the open as well. What a gift this is. And he's just managed to get through the gap there. If he hits that uh, red full ball, he's nowhere. Nicely on the blue. Just needs good position.
he's won big in snooker so often Mark Williams former world champion of course he's won the UK championship he's won the Masters but he's never quite won the Premier Seven. League came close the very first season we had the shot clock 2005 he was actually runner-up to Ronnie O'Sullivan although it wasn't too close in the final 6-0 14. And again, Mark a Williams, good 14. chance missed. He will be livid with himself. Wasn't that difficult? I think it's the shot clock, Mark. I think genuinely he's unsettled by it. Well, these should have been Mark Williams's, but um, Ali be looking to take full Eight. advantage here. And that would put him one frame away from the, the final here this evening. Nine. No, I think I agree with you, uh, Phil. He hasn't quite found the rhythm on that shot clock yet. Which is a surprise because he's not exactly a newcomer to this format. 16. Whereas Carter most certainly is. And he's a naturally quick player as well, Mark Williams. He doesn't hang about. He's got a great snooker brain. He weighs things up pretty quickly. But if he loses this one as well, well he's right up against it. That's a great shot because he had to push through the second red. 25. Well, I think he was concentrating that much on getting on that red and left hand side. Completely took his eye off the box. Amazing. Well, how many of those do you miss? One in 10,000. Whether you're on a six foot table at home, you're practicing down at the club. We're involved in a televised match. Everyone's done it. Given themselves pots, thinking instead about position. And look at the easy power generated by Williams there. To perfection. It's got the angle to go down for the blue again though, but he'll be trying to make the most of this. Seven. Just got the right side of the blue. It's been one or two loose ones from Mark already, but he needs to nail this one here. Twelve. Thirteen. Well, he could be playing the pink here, actually. He's perfectly left it high just to drop onto this red. This is one of these little tricky ones. He's got a 27 point lead. Do I take it on? Do I 19. play the red around the table? If he takes it on, it's frame ball, of course, which I think he is doing. No. Mark Williams, 9. Knew there would be plenty of distance playing it like that. 
between the red and the cue ball should it fail to find the target. Yeah, these cushions are very responsive, Phil, aren't they? And it was the shot from the pink that left him high on the red. Ooh, now then, good red there, but the yellow in a poor position for him. There's two straight on the black, might have to take the pink. Well, he's trying to screw back with side. This will need a good shot. He had some angle there. There's the side spin. Didn't r really get into the cue ball there. Eight. Can only play a safety. 27 on. 19 in the frame. Ali Carter, eight. Well, that's the scoring anomaly now. When Williams was last at the table, he needed one ball to leave Carter needing snookers. Now he needs two pots, yellow and green, but that was a thin sliver to die for. Nothing wrong with those eyes, is there? Oh, that's a bonus. He's got the knuckle. He killed the white, but look at that. What a finish. How often do we see it, Phil, when you don't kill the frame off? Just watch this on the replay. Hits the knuckle, finishes up with snooker. How many times have we seen it where the frame isn't killed off and it comes back to haunt you? He's done well there, though. Shot for Mali as well. I just wonder whether Mark just might use the brown here. There's a stopper, but he doesn't really want to m move that brown. There's no advantage to him, so it might be just up and down with the yellow. Well, he has done. Again, I'm surprised at that. He's got the yellow safe, but he's brought the brown into the open. And it's he that leads by 19. Yes, good point, Mark. As it stands, Williams doesn't need the brown. But Carter does, and bringing it into more open play, definitely to the advantage of the man at the table. Well, he's trying to get him behind the green there. Not quite enough pace. This uh, second frame could still go either way. Oh, this looks good. Just slightly heavy, perhaps. Has he got the sneaker behind the blue? I think he has. Intended behind the black, but that will do. A swerve from Ali here then. Cushion first. Whoa. Well, he's hit it that thin and hit it that bad. It's good. A good baton. It's a good job the cue ball didn't catch the bump of the middle pocket, or that would have been curtains. He's just had a quick look in the com box. He knew he was lucky there. I'll tell you what, though, Mike, over the years, no one has won a higher percentage of these relatively low scoring, scrappy frames that end up on the colours. No one's won a higher percentage than Mark Williams. Well, he really needs to do it again, of course, to keep himself in this match. 2 0 behind. As I said, the pressure would be on. quite the snooker, but it's okay. <laughs> Problem here for Ali, if he plays this up and down, it could be a double kiss. And if he plays the white up and down, he could collide into the black or the brown. This is awkward. I would say push the yellow into the side cushion, top cushion, back up the table. Time extension. And he has having to take another time extension, understandably. And I think the shot here is just push the yellow into the side cushion, back up the table. Gone the other way. He's got to avoid the double kiss. That was always on. <coughs> Not sure about that.
this is a toughie. Well done. Clean pot. He's given himself half a chance here to steal this second frame. Carter could not have cued that yellow any better. Well, he's chosen to wait for a better chance. If he felt he couldn't guarantee position on the brown, that's fair enough. Now then, is this in? If not, it's over. Oh, he's dropped in. <laughs> well, this now is frame ball. Great shot. Seven. No point having luck if you don't take advantage of it. Absolutely. And he got it at the right time. So, Allian needs two snookers here. But you only want one to tie on the pink. Two on the blue, one on Mark the pink. William seven. And Mark really needed to get that blue to the back cushion. Ali might pot this and try and lay the snooker on the pink. And where the black is, that's a distinct possibility. I'm sure that was his intention. He went for the cross double there, and he hasn't played it very well. He's left the blue in the open. And the mark will be going just to finish the frame off here. This to make it one apiece then. Well, there you go. My apologies, I thought he'd go for that. Especially with Ali needing two snookers. It's been one or two shot selections here, Phil, that we didn't expect, really. Well, I'm glad you were speaking a couple of shots ago, because I thought he was going to pot the blue for certain as well. He might pot the blue here, Ali, and lay the snooker on the pink. Just one needed on the pink to tie. I know it cuts down your odds, but that's better, actually, Five. if you can get the one. He could have done with that cue ball a lot further down the table. He needed it past the pink spot. We could play this around the angles and try and get him behind the black. Was he just chipping off it? He needs to get right tight on that black. Oh, that was a good chance missed. And Mark will just play this down towards the green pocket, I'm sure. That's all he needed to do. The closer to the pocket, the tougher it is for Carter to keep it out. Has to keep it out to keep the frame alive. Where's the white, though? Well, oh, it's oh, over now. Six and, the frame. and so, just like that, Mark Williams draws back onto level terms. He hasn't made a break of any significance yet. But I think he'll be quietly satisfied with the way things are going. Not too bad at all. Well, this is the third match that Mark Williams has been involved in in this Premier League. One more to go, of course. And he has to wait a while before he can enter the World Seniors. Nine years, in fact. That's coming up at Peterborough, though, in 2011, on November the 5th and the 6th. My co-commentator doesn't want to talk about the World Seniors. Unfortunately, in the qualifiers earlier this week, he was very unluckily defeated by Darren Morgan. The wounds are still open. No comment. It was a very high standard match, though. 
I'll tell you what, Mike made a 60 break in the second frame of that best of three, and Morgan cleared up with 68. It was like old times. No idea where he got that from. I've been practicing as well all week, you know, for that's five days solid. Didn't really need to meet Darren at that stage, and I think he didn't want to meet me, but he played really Take well. Seats, quickly, and good luck please. to him in a couple of weeks' time. The third frame, Mark Williams to break. One of the funniest things Mark Williams ever said on the circuit once he beat Darren Morgan 9 1 in the UK Championship, and he came off and he said, I am really disappointed. And he said to him, Why is that, Mark? He said, I wanted to win 9 0. <laughs> they are friendly rivals, let's put it that way. Yeah, I think his father-in-law told me he hadn't been practicing for three months. Oh, well, you can't kid a kid. Look forward to that one in a couple of weeks' time. Gary Wilkinson is there as well. well Ex-world match play champion. <coughs> the, the new waistcoat looked well last week, um, Gary. Anyway, back to business here. Mark Williams will be delighted to get that second frame on the board. He can build now, more be it via fluke on the green. Doesn't matter. Chance here. Well, well I thought he might try and get onto the black, but I was hoping to get onto the pink. And there's no way he'll take on a pot. Mark Williams won. Still think it should have been the best of fives last week, Phil, instead of the best of threes, but I'm not going there. I've, uh, I've put my piece in, I can tell you. Look forward to next year. Wonder I keep saying that. Well, Ali Carter won't be looking forward to the next few moments. He's left Mark Williams right in. So far tonight, I think one of the problems Williams is encountering, not really enjoying the best of positional luck. OK, that one worked out OK. But he's finding sustained rhythm difficult to build again there. Now, that was his own fault, really. Not luck, that was just a misjudgment. Yeah, I think he hasn't quite got the pace of this table yet, either. He's just struggling to get the white in the right position. He's normally very good when he's in and amongst them. Mark Williams, eight. I don't think he can quite gauge the clock without wishing to labour a point. I think it's up in the back of his mind somewhere how many seconds have ticked down. Just a little too hasty. You know, well, that was the sort of shot that he missed against Ronnie three times on the chop, which cost him frame a match. He's obviously been practising that one from that side. Oh, he's caught the knuckle there. Well, he's been a little bit fortunate if that's gone behind the brown. He's brought the red up the table and he needs some cover and he hasn't got it. And the pink goes to this left corner if he can just stun down for it. Well, obviously the red was fairly straight, but that will do. He's nicely on the ground. And I say the pink is available. Five. Packed 
house here, in the bit of leisure centre. Six. What a better snooker this, Phil, isn't it? Jamie Cope, Dave Howard, Liam Highfield, who's on the main tour. And of course, for many years, the adopted hometown of the most successful Welshman in the history of snooker, well, Ray Reardon, six times world champion. Yes, and there's still he's still got the club in town, actually, Reardon's. 13. Well, his name is to it anyway. It's a nice club. <laughs> From 1970 until 1978, Reardon won the World Championship six times. Won the second championship, played at the Crucible, beating a South African in the final. Yeah. Perry Manns. He was a hard man, wasn't he? Some player. But the game has moved on since then. It's a more modern game. These boys like to get the pack open as early as possible. Is the old school Ray and whatever you like just chip them out at the edge of the pack. 37. But these boys, every chance they get, no, well, I want them open as fast as possible. 28. Well, he needed just a touch more angle on this red. 35. Well, there was nothing there. 36. All he could do was drop the red in. Well, he might play a safety. 35. We've got to hurry up. Eight seconds. He's got to make his mind up. He's checking the clock again. Time extension. Time extension. <laughs> he called the extension in the nick of time oh, there. He left that late, didn't he? A nanosecond to go before he looked at Paul Collier and nodded. Extension, please. You might still be going for this black. Oh, well. Well, there you go. I'm not quite sure about that one. That was, again, was because he was rushed. At this level, a 36 break is modest, but it's his highest of the match so far. And to leave a red like that was unforgivable. It really was. And look at the nudge there as well. Quite. Wasn't quite sure what he was trying to play there, uh, Mark um, Phil. You could have played away safety. Why play the black? You could have played the green. <laughs> Perhaps he didn't clear his mind. Wasn't sure what he wanted to play. Eight. Just a real mental blunder, which could prove expensive. No. Perfect angle to nudge these two reds. Nicely done. I think he's held the spot, actually. That's OK. Let's go on to the pink spot. 16. Seventeen. Doesn't want to be too straight, as Williams was when his break Eighth. ended. Twenty-five. Might lay a snooker here. The two reds are fairly in the open, so we'll take I a good shot to get them side. That was a good shot. The miss has been called, but I think Ali will take this on. One. 
and the whole frame has changed on Williams being befuddled when he was on the black ahead by 45. Eight. to the middle there's no reason why you can't win the frame here looks like he's got a slight angle on the yellow just to stun over for the green 14 he's just consulting the scoreboard two behind that means he doesn't need the black just yellow to pink will do 16 well he chose to go the other way I'm surprised at that, why he didn't play a power stun shot and keep closer to the green, but this still needs a good pot. Great shot. That was right down the line of that one, and he cued it perfectly. That should win in this third frame. Bang in the middle. He can play this lad, Phil, can he, when he gets going, when he puts it together. Every tournament you look down the list, you can see 10, maybe 12 potential winners. And on everyone's list is the name of Ali Carter. Only needs the pink then. Time extension. Yeah, he's given himself time to pop frame ball. Williams was in control, but he lost his train of thought. And with a superior end game, Carter re-establishes the lead at 2-1. The Silver Fern means playing with a lot of heart, being the best in the world. Representing all those players that have gone before us and who will go after us. My family and the sacrifices that they have made. The Silver Fern is like a dream come true, and I'm just one of the shining stars amongst the rest. The power of the Fern. The power of the Fern. Is what drives me. Is what drives me. Is what drives us. Diamond Silver Ferns, October 23rd, live Sky Sport. The Arctic, a place too hostile for humans. Yet four million live there. Here, they remember the old ways. It's one of the largest predators in these seas. The time-honored techniques. If he strikes too soon, the whole park will die. The ancient secrets. Human Planet, tonight, Prime. Welcome back to the PartyPerker.com Premier League Snooker, evening number six of the 2011 event. The first semi-final is underway, well underway, and Ali Carter is going nicely. Two and up on Mark Williams, who will be thinking he should be 2-1 ahead. Thank you, frame four. Ali Carter to break. On his first outing in the tournament, Carter made the final in Doncaster. Can he do the same? Here in the potteries. Well, good pace on the white, but he might have left this red for Mark here, unless he's playing a safety, which he is doing. Wasn't quite the right angle to go into the black. So Mark Williams in under a little bit of pressure here. Well, 
was a half chance. There's a possibility of a cross double here to the right centre. He's gone for the cut. Well, unless he's covered that red, that's amazing. I don't think he has. Well, another incredible shot there Quite. from Mark Williams. He chose to go for that red to the centre, but he left it on. I think Carter played with just a, a touch of side, and maybe that's why he hasn't got the position he desired. But as Mike said, another mental faux pas from Williams. <laughs> Thankfully for the Welshman, well. it's cost him only a single point. This is not easy though. He's got it. That's a great shot. <laughs> That's when you don't need a soft tip on your cue. Eight. You can't play those with a soft tip. Cracking pot. No. And with the open red on the bottom of the bunch, this could lead to big things. Well, especially if he gets low on it, Phil, of course, he could split the rest. So, two good shots there to get himself in. Has he gone too far? He might have got a big bounce off that cushion. I think he's lost 16. position here. Yes, the replay showed it was a, a fierce reaction off the side cushion. And so just 16 points. Mark Williams, 16. <laughs> At least he's had the presence of mind to tuck Carter in behind the black. never tell what Mark's thinking actually he's so laid back <laughs> you want this one you want to take it into a decider if it does my, my prediction might still be on albeit under pressure for Mandy Goldstein was an attempted pot. He's been a little bit fortunate there to leave it awkward over the black. Well, I can't see Mark taking this on. He might just leave the white there and push the red up the table. Made such a good start to the tournament, Williams at the Guildford Spectrum in early September. Beat Jimmy White 3-0 in the semi-finals, making 105 break. Then he beat Sean Murphy 3-1 in the final that evening with 101 break. But last week, down at Western Supermare, lost in the semi-final 3-1 to Judd Trump. And that's why winning this match is absolutely vital for him, as it is, of course, for Carter. That's a better one. Ali having to swerve around the green here and right down the line of this one. Doesn't want to cannon the blue. It's always the problem with that shot. So Mike Williams in with that good safety has forced the uh, the error. One.
15 completed matches in the tournament so far. We've only had three 10 minute shootouts. Could this be the fourth? 16. Really, where Williams is, it should be. He's having to work these. This isn't straightforward. They're sort of covering each other, actually. So he just needs to remove a couple of these reds just to open things up a little bit. He's under hit that one slightly. I want to be high over this cue ball. 31. Looks like he's coming back off the reds. 32. Well, that's a plus for him, that way going out of the cushion, but I don't think it'll matter. From here, we expect him to win the frame. 32. He's just beginning to find his feet here. He's looking a 39. lot more relaxed and smoother. 40. This is one of these guys in our game. We've been privileged to watch these guys at work, uh, Phil, isn't it? He's got so much talent, and when he's really at the top of his game, he's, he makes it look effortless. You know, you've got the likes of Ronnie and Stephen. 47. It's so good, and it's so good to watch. 48. Hard to categorise players over the generations, but I think everyone would agree that Mark Williams is certainly in the top ten of all time. Yes, I'll agree with that. <laughs> that was frame ball, and the crowd have done their calculations, so we're going into a final frame shootout. 54. 55. Well, he knows the frame is safe. It would be nice. To, it would be nice to see a sentry. Not red down the table. It's not too bad actually. Been being left-handed to the right side of the table for him. One thousand pounds bonus for the highest break 69. of every evening in this tournament. Williams 70. aware of that. Seventy-six. Well, possible 119, 118 now, I think. No, I might just need to just get the right side of the green here. Well, he's decided to leave himself the cross double. Eighty-three. Go on, get in. Well played. 84. Sentry still on. Uh, this is much better than the Welshman. 80. Yes, a double to middle cost him the opening frame. Very 80. aggressive shot selection it was. A double here. 90. Could well have given him some hefty pocket money. 93. Just brown and blue needed for what would be his third century of the tournament. Twelfth of the season. 97. And the 284th of his career. 102. Well, he struggled early on in this match, but he's back. This has been superb. On the frame, what a way to draw level. Subdued until that point. 
and then Williams explodes with excellence. And that means we've now got 10 minutes of potting entertainment. So when it goes 2-2 in the Premier League, we have a 10-minute shootout. It's a 20-second shot clock for the first five minutes, then it goes down to 15. Brutal for the final five minutes. On every shot, a ball must make contact with a cushion or be potted. And all fouls will be penalised with ball in hand, and no time extensions are permitted. That's a big one for me there, Phil. No time extensions. They will lag for the break as well, a la nine ball pool. If someone unluckily goes in off, it can be so expensive for them. And if Williams can make the final here, I personally think he's looking very good indeed for the playoffs. If he loses, well, I think his back would be against the wall. Yes, yeah, great innovation this year to do the... Uh... 10-minute shootout in the final frame. No pressure, then. And, of course, it whets the appetite for one of my favourite tournaments of the entire season, the Sky Shootout up at the Blackpool Tower Circus at the end of January, when all matches are 10 minutes. Action is fast and furious. When we went up there last year, I just wondered what the tournament was going to be like. I must admit, I had my reservations. After about four matches, I realised that I was enjoying yeah, this great. perhaps more than any other event I've been to or campaign. Yeah, it was fantastic, wasn't it? Looking forward to Thank that one again in the New Year's. Players are lagging so, for break. Lagging to break then. Well, some of the pool guys, they are amazing with their lags. Efren Reyes, sure, sure, he sure. is extraordinary, the Filipino. Can seem to glue the cue ball okay, to thank that you. Deciding bottom frame cushion. The shootout rules. These two didn't Ali cover Carter themselves in glory. But this is what matters most. The next ten minutes. And if you're a few points ahead, you can control the frame. Good break off there. Well, if he hits the wrong red here, could leave one on. He has done. He needed to hit the left on red. What a chance this is for Ali. That was a good break-off shot for Mali Carter. He really had Mark in, in trouble there. All you need to do in this sort of situation is stay at the table. One. Could this be shades of what happened to Williams in the shootout at Blackpool last season? Then... He was drawn against John Higgins in the first round. And Higgins dominated, winning that frame 93-7. Might have to go down for the blue here, unless he plays a little cannon Eight. on another red to stay on the black. Top spin, so it will be the blue or the book colours. As I've said no. just a minute ago, you have to try and stay at the table. Has he gone too far? 12. The body language says yes. Oh, not sure. Can he kick this in? I think he's playing a safety. Well, he'll be annoyed with himself. That was a great chance. Ali Carter, 12. Yes, the only kicking he was doing there was kicking himself. What a reprieve for the Welshman. Must have anticipated that Carter was going to score more than 12 there. Well, if you're 30, 45 points behind with six and a half minutes to go or something like that, you rise up against it. Not too bad. It's not an exaggeration to say that the next seven plus minutes could decide one of our semi finalists.
in the actual playoffs. Of course, Mark won't want the safety battle to go on too long. He's still 12 points behind. He wants to get a chance to get in, as both players do. Well, that's a good shot from Ali. He's got the red covered on the right-hand side, so Mark can only play a safety here. And he also has to cover that red on the right-hand side. Packed audience here. Loving this. So are we. It's a good cue ball. He'll be very happy with that. And it took about three seconds to reach the bottom cushion, so that's the quarter's advantage as well. Well, I know there's only 12 points on the board, but the clock is running down here for the Welshman. Somehow, he's got to get in. Another good one. He's not given Mark a chance of a pot in the last couple of minutes. Oh, not the best. It's thin and he's come back down the table. That tells us we're now playing under a 15 second shot clock. Even more unforgiving. Well, if Ali makes about a 30 or 40 here, it won't really matter. 15 seconds a shot now. The noise there to denote 15 Eight. seconds a shot was rather like the lift in Grace Brothers. Are you being served? Well, Nine. Mark served us up a treat in the last one with that sentry. Can Ali go one better here? Oh, hang on, hang on. Oh. It just looked like it was going to stay there. 16. At the moment, Ali Carter is in control. Seventeen. You know it's only 15 seconds per shot, but he's got to try and use up all of that time on every shot while he's at the table. I reckon on the time ball spotted equation, if he knocks in three, certainly four more, I can't imagine Williams could come back. Well, I would suggest a couple more reds with colours and it's all over, really, for Mark Williams. It's not as if there's, there's not enough, you know, there is enough points there, but there's not enough time. Well, if he does lose this frame, Williams will leave the Bidolf Valley Leisure Centre with nine points and involvement in one more evening at the Sparse Ball Leisure Centre in Banbury in November. 31. And you would think he would have to win overall that evening to make absolutely sure of going through. Ali Carter is out of position here, but again, it's all about the clock. Bramble. Ali Carter, 31. And Ali Carter's played a pretty shrewd frame here. Mark will be going for this. He's got to get in, as you've said. But has he got enough time? Well, it's all over now. Mm. 
Yes, well, Williams produced the highlight of the match, undoubtedly. 115 break in frame number four. But he's not going to get the desired result. Well, he's been completely shut out in this final frame. Hasn't had a chance to get in at all. Eight. Ali Carter has totally controlled it. Nine. Well, no, now it's physically 16. impossible for Williams to recover from this, even if he gets the chance. And that's a good feeling for the man from Essex, who now awaits Ding Jun Wei or 17. Jimmy White in the final. And of course, if Carter were to win the final, Mike, the debut boy in this year's Premier League would go 24. to the top of the charts. 25. It's such a class field, isn't it? You know, Ronnie, the defending champion, we know that uh, his pedigree in this uh, Premier League. But um, these guys are so good. But it's going to be the Englishman here 32. that's coming out the, the victor in this first semi-final. And he's played a very, very good frame. He was put under it a little bit when Mark came back at him. Forty. Carter led one nil and two one. His nose is going to be in front when it really matters at three two. 41 in the frame, Ali Carter. The clock runs out. Mark Williams runs out of the arena. Beaten 3-2. His continued participation in the playoffs now hanging in the balance. Ali Carter, they're looking good, especially if he can win tonight's final. Today, live Sky Sport 3. Expendables, coming this month to Sky Movies. With so much great TV to watch and record on Sky, 
your my sky can sometimes get full. That's why we produced a new decoder with a whopping four times the capacity. So now you can record up to 130 hours of crystal clear HD. Introducing the new My Sky Plus. The best just got better. It's the precursor to the Four Nations, a one-off test match between old rivals, the Kangaroos and the Kiwis. And when such opportunities arise, it can only mean one thing. Rugby League mayhem. There he goes, there he goes. He's headed for the post. It's a try for me. Can you believe this? Can a star-studded Kangaroos reassert their mark against our world champion Kiwis? The Kangaroos versus Kiwis. Live Sky Sport 2. Welcome back to thepartypoker.com snooker Premier League. Confirmation of our first match tonight. Mark Williams up against Ali Carter. Went to the final frame and Ali Carter will be over the moon with that. 3-2 the winner. As you can see next up, second semi-final, Ding Junhui against one of the game's greatest ever players. The whirlwind, Jimmy White. But that win for Ali Carter takes him into fourth place, having only played two weeks in the Premier League. And uh, in those two weeks, he's with me now. You've got to the final of both of them. You must be very pleased, Ali. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, to get to a final, um, you know, and this is good. Just keep getting to finals. Hopefully I can win one and uh, progress on to the last four. What did you make of tonight's game? A bit scrappy, do you think? Yeah, it was a bit scrappy. Um, we both struggled to, to get the knack of the table a little bit. But, um, you know, all things aside, I'm pleased to get through. And uh, obviously the shootout frame in the end is interesting. You've got to get a real move on. But, yeah, it was good. There was a, a moment in tonight's match w which you came up against Ronnie a couple of weeks ago where the miss rule came into contention. I must ask you, because after you missed three times a couple of weeks ago, we never got a chance to speak to you because obviously you lost that frame in that match and we spoke to Ronnie and we haven't spoken to you since. Um, obviously you're aware of what happens, that if you miss it for the third time, you lose the frame. And in your case, you lost the match and the final. I mean, you knew what was happening. A strange decision? Do you think, would you have made that decision in a ranking event? Um, yeah, well, it was a weird one. I mean, I think, I think to be honest with you, it rolled out, the white rolled out, the table pulled away a little bit. But, you know, it's probably the wrong shot, but you haven't got a lot of time to sort of think of anything else. All the reds are open. I was really sort of, you know, Steimer did what to do. So, you know, I went for the third go and it didn't work out. But, um, you know, it's just one in things. Uh, you're in the final now. You've got the winner of either Ding or Jimmy. Preference? Uh, anyone will do. You know, it's going to be one of them. So, yeah, I'll just um, look forward to it and uh, try and enjoy the final. You guys always say either would do. You must. There must be a little sneaky, I'd rather play him or him. Just well, I mean, I've, pl I've already played Ding uh, last week, so it'd be nice to play Jimmy. Yeah, um, you know, for him to get through to the final and get some points on the board would be good. And finally, if you do win tonight, will you be wearing the lucky socks again? Can we have a look at them? Can you just... There is a story behind it. You turned up tonight in a pair of shorts with ankle socks on. Look at his face. He's not happy <laughs> at all. And you had to borrow a pair of socks. Is that right? Yeah, well, I think these ones have been in the boot of my car for about three years. But, um, yeah, they're, they're nice anyway. So I might just uh, keep them on for the final as well. Yeah, the lucky socks. Congratulations. Ali Carter, everyone. We'll see you in the final, Ali. Thanks, pal. All right, a quick break for us. Do not go anywhere. When we come back, the whirlwind will be in action. In association with Kiwi Bacon, December 3rd, Sky Arena. Book now. When you least expect it, something amazing happens. 
and brings you a stunning entertainment experience with unmissable blockbuster premiere movies. It is truly an honor to be in your presence. You're welcome! Now this party's off the leash. Right? Right. Yeah! The world's biggest sporting event. This could be sensational. Oh, what a try! A spectacular selection of documentaries. There's no acting here, it's the real thing. And it's brilliant. It just gets you. We have this one life to appreciate the grand design of the universe. And all the entertainment you can imagine. This is gonna blow your mind. She is true Hollywood royalty. This is the best award show ever. It's quite spectacular. Experience it all. October, only on Sky. was in a dream before the war, but now it's woken up and said goodbye to it. Season long, the Hyundai A-League, live only on Sky Sports. Welcome back to PartyPoker.com Snooker Premier League. Confirmation of our first semi-final tonight. Mark Williams lost it by the odd frame. 3-2 against Ali Carter. He finds himself in tonight's final, where he will play the winner of our next one. Ding Junhui or Jimmy White. And as you can see, it's very important for both players tonight. Jimmy's played two, yet to win a frame. Ding's played two, yet to win an evening. Right, let's get on with it. Time to meet the players. And first up, one of the game's greatest ever, the whirlwind. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the action. We're coming to you live from a packed arena here at the Good Old Leisure Centre, Stoke on Trent. It's the PartyPoker.com Premier League snooker brought to you by Matchroom Sport. We're live on Sky Sports HD, the best of five frames. Our referee in charge of the action is Paul Collier, and we have a 20 second shot clock. Let's meet the players. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome from London, the reigning World Seniors Champion, but he's known as the People's Champion, the Warwick, Jimmy Wayne! You forgot about me, Jim. Uh, it's a, always a quiet night when Jimmy White's in town, and a big night for you as well, because you've played two in the Premier League so far, yet to, to win a match, yet to win a frame, Jim, as well. Yeah, I've struggled. Um, I had a few chances against Mark Williams. I didn't take them. And um, I've not really sort of produced any form yet, so hopefully tonight I can. Is there a reason for it, Jim? Is it, can you put your finger on why it's not happened yet? He potted more balls than me. <laughs> Is it just that? But in your first match, you were quite unlucky. You potted, I think, the black and the white went in off as well. Yeah, I was a bit tentative. I didn't really um, sort of settle down at all in either matches. So hopefully I can produce a bit of form tonight. You know, I'm a big fan of yours, Jim. Is there anything I can do to Ding? He's coming out next. Do you want me to, like, really crunch his hand when I shake hands with him? Or? Ding's just quality. There's nothing you can do to him. 
going to be a great game. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the best ever. The whirlwind, Jimmy White. Thanks, Jimmy. I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready. Next up, Ding Jing Rui. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to meet China's number one, Esteem Zhang Hui! Dink, um, we're going to have a, a chat with you tonight because I understand your English is, uh, is probably better than mine, actually. So um, you've got lots of fans in tonight. They're expecting a Ding Jing Wee win. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Jimmy fans more than me, I think. Did you, um, as a child, when you were growing up and enjoying the game and, and developing in the game, was Jimmy one of the players that you'd watch on TV a lot? Yeah, I think I watched uh, a lot when I, w when I was young and... Uh, He's played quick snooker. I like to watch. Is he an idol of yours? Do you, do you look up to Jimmy? Is he one of the snooker gods in your eyes? He is. Ding. <laughs> it's always lovely to speak. Ding Jung Wee, everyone. Best of luck, Ding. <laughs> well, Mike Hallett correctly predicted the result of the first semi-final. I wonder how we do with the second one. Mike and Phil, for your boys in the box. A diplomatic ding, if in doubt, nod. Thank you, the first frame. Always works. Now, we've talked about plenty of permutations in the Premier League this year for Jimmy White. This is it. If he doesn't win this match, he will not make the playoffs. It's as simple as that. Well, that was a chance, but they didn't need to leave reds on like this. He's on the pink. commentating on a match between these two in the Premier League with the shot clock in place when Jimmy ran out a convincing winner and by the end of it things weren't going Ding's Seven. way at all and he was getting a little mentally frazzled Eight. bordering on petulant but that was a while ago he's a lot more mature these days Well, I think he needed that white a little bit further into the middle of the table for this black. There's always going to be a question mark over that one. Ding Jun Wee, eight. Idea on it. <laughs> Jimmy not able to take advantage. That's two chances into that right corner. And I think this one passes the black. If we watch the replay, pretty much the same position as the first pot he attempted. Oh. That's a poor miss, really. Considering what he's done in the game, it might sound preposterous, but he doesn't play an awful lot on TV these days, White, and I think he gets a little nervous. A sizable break would quell those nerves. But now that's three shots and three chances for Ding. It's all about relaxing, isn't it? But being keyed up at the same time, and I agree with you, Phil. He just didn't just look edgy over the last couple of weeks. Perhaps he could just settle down quicker, but he has found one there. Some of things and we's fans in. Well, that's 
passes the red to the middle to Eight. start this break. Nine. I think these two, in many respects, have got a lot in common. They've both, if you think about it, been victims of adulation. White, wherever he plays, particularly at the Crucible in his heyday, 16. I think he was put under immense pressure to finally prevail there and never quite did. And when Ding plays in China, also he's under pressure. And the start here today is far from impressive. table but it's all about taking it out there we've seen great snooker from him over the years but just lately by his own ambition he's not happy with his performances six good chance here though if you can just get off to a good start here Jimmy just make this opportunity count I'm sure you'll just uh, settle down Just lost the cue ball a little bit there. 14. Time. time extension. Using his time extension here. Two allowed per frame, just a reminder. But the clock runs down quickly. Only 25 seconds remaining. Fifteen. Nice and played. He's floated the black in. He's perfectly on the red. Twenty-two. Oh, how this crowd here this evening would love to see Jimmy get a victory. And there's a few Dings and Wee fans in as well. And this man at the table has always been so popular around the world. 30. Thirty-one. Played in the first match of this year's Premier League. Lost 3 0 to John Higgins at the Embassy Theatre in Skegness. Next time out at Guildford, he lost 3-0 to Mark Williams in the semi-finals. The opportunity here, though, very much to get his first frame on the board. Yeah, he had one or two chances against Mark that evening as well, Phil, in Guildford. 44. Couldn't convert. This is better. 45. This already is White's highest break of the tournament. 52. Jimmy White, 52. Unfortunately for him, there's just one or two too many of those creeping in. given the mistakes he's made Ding doesn't really deserve to win the frame but he still could well he's slightly out of position he tried to nudge that red off the side cushion the, well he might play the cross double here Gone for the cut. Ding Jun Wee, eight. Well, Jimmy, we're taking this red on there, the corner pocket. Yeah. 
20 points in it, 51 on the table, so again this first break could still go either way. It's very loose indeed from Ding. I'm just wondering whether he's taken this on. Great top. <laughs> One. Excellent red. He's got control of the table here. He could take the black on. Wonderful pot. Could lay the snooker. Jimmy White. One. Thirty-one in the frame. Sorry, twenty-one in the frame. Forty-three on the table. Jimmy will still need that red on the side cushion to take this opening frame. Well played. He's got a perfect angle here. He just needs a good cannon into the red. Missed it. Will he take it on? It's frame ball. Eight. I think he might. He could wobble this and get the red away from the pocket. No. Has he fluked it? It's close. Ah. Well, he's just apologised to Ding Junhui. Could it be his night? Before this, the Premier League had been quite literally pointless for Jimmy Jane. White. Not anymore. 16. Probably reckons it's been quite a while since he's had one of those, Phil. He'll put it down in the diary. Might be important. I'm sure it could be. Twenty-eight. Well, I'm sure he's going to be pleased with his opening train. So 52 and 34, a timely fluke and some poor mistakes from Ding. Jimmy White wins his first frame of the tournament. stack up when you look back on your career with the All Blacks. Every team is pushing the laws to the limit. What am I saying? I'm saying that you think that we might win the World Cup. Sky Sport has your Rugby World Cup covered. Rialdo Channel. Full strength films for half the price. Doesn't that deserve your full attention? No pale imitations, no shallow substitutes. Only the originals, including the Millennium Trilogy and the premiere of The Girl Who Kicked the Hornet's Nest. Subscribe in October and get your first three months for half price. That sounds great. Call 0800 759 123 or go to Channel 29 to subscribe now. That's a good idea. Rialto Channel, New Zealand's home of independent film.
With no frame wins in your first two matches, you need a little bit of luck, and that's precisely what Jimmy White got in the opening frame against Ding here tonight. Played it into one top corner pocket, it trickled into another. And that was frame ball. And that's why the whirlwind has taken a 1-0 lead over China's number one player. Can White progress to the final to take on Ali Carter? Or will Ding fight back? Thank you, the second frame. Jimmy White to break. One thing is absolutely cast iron certain. Ding will need to improve. By his standards, that was a nightmare first frame. Chance here, though. Not a good break off shot from Jimmy. Too thin. Well, that was a similar shot that Jimmy played in the opener. Well, Jimmy could really do some damage here. One. Eight. Nine. expectation in the room here this evening for not only one Jimmy White victory but possibly Four two eight. has he gone too far on this one oh, he's looking to kick it in with a touch of right hand side no problem nicely on the back this is more like it A little earlier in the show, we told you about the World Seniors Championship in Peterborough in early Friday November. Two. And of course, the defending champion there is Jimmy White. Oh, what about that second kiss on the red? The white was going towards that side cushion. Well, that will do nicely. Just needs to keep his concentration. Prone to missing 30. the odd easy one he did in the first frame on 52 with a frame at his mercy. Jordan already should have potted. We saw the pre-match odds, didn't we, Mike? Before a ball was struck tonight, Ding was five to one on. I think anyone who's taken those odds will be sweating slightly. Forty-six. Delete slightly. Forty-seven. So often at this stage over frame, Jimmy tends to throw one in when we least expect it. Let's hope that he doesn't do here, because this is a great chance to make it 2-0. He's looking much better this evening. 50. 51. And he gets frustrated as well as sometimes with his performances. He knows he can play better than he has done this season so far. And pack crowd here. Uh, he wants to play for them as well. And it's pride in the performance of all these lads. 58. 59. Still needs a couple of reds though. And he's a little bit high on this black. He's missed it. He's overcut it. Jimmy White, 59. 59, but will it be enough? And that was all about, really, because he got too high on the black. One. Another chance here for Ding Zhongwei, then. A 
only one awkward ball on the table. The red on the left-hand side cushion towards Eight. the balk line. Apart from that, this has to be regarded as a realistic chance. Just checking that red near the brown though, Phil. I'm not sure if it'll go, well, once the other one's potted anyway. Could be at that angle, it might just be masked by the brown. disaster if they're going behind the pink although it did have the red up the table 16. Yeah, he's just checking that red near the brown now mm, he's got to get rid of the one near the pocket but uh, from that angle it looks like it will pot so the real problem here 17. is the one near the side cushion he's gone to nudge the red and brown and he might have run out of position. He took a calculated risk there, and he's finished nowhere. 24. I'm not sure that was the right shot at that stage. If the red didn't go, perhaps it was. Ding Jun Wee, 24. Well, only 24, but you know, if he got that cannon, it could have been more. And Jimmy trying to put the red to the side cushion. That's a good shot. Another consideration, does the red closest to the brown pot to the middle pocket? Tempted pot. Well, we'll find out now, Phil, because um, Jimmy's in a good position to take it on, but I don't think it does. Otherwise, I think it would. Is he playing the cross double? Off the green? Oh. Well, I thought it was worth a try. It was a big pocket. In fact, he got it too close to the pocket. If it cannon into the green, no problem. Still hasn't won this one yet, though. <laughs> no, I'm not sure about that one. He's offered up a pot here for Jimmy. Done. And I think at the same time we tried to get the cannon into the brown and red. He's looking to play the yellow here to open up brown and red. And he's just dropping onto the other one actually. Mind you, if he gets a red and colour, he could lay a good snooker. And I think he's got the angle to get in behind the green, so Three. within a couple of shots here, if he doesn't get them open, Jimmy could be in some trouble. Four. It was actually a very good pot on the yellow because he didn't have a full pocket, did he? Now then, there's no way he can get the cannon here, so I would suggest a snooker after this shot. He's gone for it. Unlucky. Seven. Well, he's got the snooker in the end, anyway. Ding Jun Wee, seven. <laughs> Foul and a miss. Ding Jun Wee, four. Back. I think that might go back. 
Yes, Ding staying in his chair. Okay. I wasn't too far away from that one, that first attempt, Jimmy. And just depends where things land. He's actually caught the red the wrong side. But has it gone far enough? I think this red is on. It was. And now Ding has just gone fake right. in his second trip. All the six colours on their spots. I'll tell you what, Phil, he'd be delighted if he pinches this. And you can trace all of this back to White's missed black four on that break of 59. <coughs> Six. Nine. Thirteen. This could be an absolutely crunch frame. Still needs them all. Eighteen. Twenty-four. What a blow this would be for White. But only himself to blame. White said it at the start of the match. Ding is quality. And there we saw it. Last red to black clearance. He pinches frame two and draws level at one frame each. The World Seniors Championship coming up live and exclusive here on Sky Sports on November 5 and 6 from Peterborough. Of course, Jimmy White is the defending champion. Other big names involved in that tournament. Six times world champion Steve Davis. He's playing Tony Drago in the first round. White starts off against his good pal Tony Knowles. It's John Parrott, the 1991 world champion against Joe Johnson. New Zealand's Dino Kane takes on one of our commentary team, Neil Folds. The two Canadians, Cliff Thorburn and Alain Robidoux, clash. Nigel Bond, the winner of the shootout last January. He meets Dennis Taylor, the 1985 world champion. Gary Wilkinson against Darren Morgan. And there are two names you're not familiar with, I'm sure. Carl Townsend and Steve Ventham. I believe it will be the television debut for both of them, certainly for Townsend. And so that will be quite some occasion. Can White defend the World Seniors title? More immediately, can he recover from the loss of frame two and win a match? He has to win. Thank you, the third frame. Ding Jun Wee to break. Poor break off shot. Caught the reds far too thick. Only just got the cue ball past the bolt line. One. Well, I think he intended to be on the blue to the middle there, but still has it to the corner. Well, he'll want to put right that second crate. He knows that should have been his. Six. Seven. Fourteen. Still one or two loose reds here. to play on the pink, 15. didn't have the ideal angle to stay on the black. Don't know where this will re-spot though, it might go behind the pack after this one. It does go on. 20. 
21. 22. Well, he's looked a lot better this evening, Jimmy White, but he'll be annoyed in losing that second frame. This would open up another red to the opposite corner. 29. 30. Regardless of what happens now, though, this has been a vast improvement on his previous showings in the tournament. We've talked about wide being bottom of the table. Well, this is a battle of the cellar dwellers Where's because wide's 10th, Ding is 9th. And a defeat for Ding here yeah, yeah. would be a real setback in terms of his playoff hopes. Great shot. Played with a touch of reverse side. 45. Don't know if he can one or two open here in potting this one. I think he can. Well, he's fairly straight 46. on the blue, but that red on the right-hand side is available if he just drops this in. Now then, can he just float this in and stay on the black? The, 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 what was the problem with this one? Is he might just push that second red onto the black. 51. Could play the pace. Oh, that's not a bad cannon. 52. And the problem here is that the black spot is covered, and possibly the pink. He doesn't want this to go on to the pink spot, he wants this to go behind the red. Oh! Jimmy White, 52. History repeating itself. First frame made 52, Mr. Neasy Pot. Second frame made 59, what? Mr. Black off its spot, and now that one there. He was punished in frame two, was white. Will he be punished here? Well, it would be a massive blow. <laughs> Eight. signs in that second frame with that good clearance from Ding and Wee that he was just beginning to play as well. Sixteen. If you think about it, Mike, the match so far has been a microcosm of White's career, raising expectations 17. and not quite able to fulfil them. He's six defeats in World Championship finals, heartbreaking not just for him, before his legion of fans. Twenty-four. How would they love a white victory here this evening and put himself into the final? Ali Carter is waiting for these two. Well, he's in pole position now. This again will open up the other two reds to the 32. opposite corner. And he got the chance in the last frame, took it. And he's looking good. All the balls in the open. Everyone says Jimmy White is the best player never to be world champion. Couldn't possibly disagree with that. You could also make the point that of the current crop of superstar 48. players in snooker, Ding is perhaps the best without winning the game's premier 49. title. Yeah, they, they said that he could possibly win it, be one of the youngest or the youngest ever to win the world title. That was about three or four years ago, but 
I would suggest that he should, he's got to target it in the next two or three seasons, Phil. Otherwise, you know, hang on, hang on. As we say that, he's snooking himself on the yellow. 56. Incredible. Always a risk of that going that way. Well, he'll be he's happy with that. 56. I think Stuart Bingham this year, Phil, won in the Australian Open. That was a monkey off his back. We'll just get back to that world title. You know, Ding would love to win the title in the next uh, couple of years. <laughs> and they won't be too far away, are they? We keep saying it, don't we? One finishes, and all of a sudden, another one begins. Meanwhile, well, I think Jimmy being left down, he could just get the cue in there a little bit, but he's not interested. He's going to just lay the snooker. Might have got four ball. It's a little bit careless if he hasn't. If he's left a little edge there for Ding Jun Wee. Well, that is careless. Should have made sure of that. Now he's found himself in trouble. Just needs the yellow to travel a little more. Not bad. OK, he's got the double kiss, but not too bad. But he could find himself in trouble after this one. Not a seat to be had. That's a better one. Now, I think he has got the snooker this time. King having to swerve around the green. Nicely done. Doesn't want the double kiss. He's okay. Ooh, this could be a bonus. He's got one back. <laughs> Easy to hit for Jimmy, but he's got to get it safe. Well, this is on. And he's got the angle to get back to the green as well. He might take this on. <laughs> now then, where are they going to finish? Well, this is a chance. Well, there's only four points in it. Yes, white needs yellow to pink. Got a touch far there. It's a pity because it was a good pot. Jimmy White, two. Fascinating finish then to this third frame. Just two points in it. This is a thin cut into the middle. He's got it. He's there. And he's got the nice cannon as well. He just needs the blue and the pink. Now then, though, where's this going to finish? It sounded a slightly heavy contact. It's not bad. But does he take it to the middle or the corner? He's taking it to the middle pocket. This is frame ball for 2-1.
Jimmy White has made three half-century breaks in the match. But his most important contribution, that yellow to pink clearance. With that, the whirlwind is back in front at 2-1. Available in HD, it's the semi-finals of the Rugby World Cup. Saturday night, a Northern finalist will be found when Wales face France. Then Sunday, Trans-Tasman stakes have never been higher as the Wallabies take on the All Blacks. The Rugby World Cup semi-finals this Saturday and Sunday. Live and available in HD on Sky Sport 1. Broadcast coverage brought to you by Heineken, Bunnings Warehouse and Telecom. Would you like a nice hot cup of tea? How about a nice big cup of... Get your ass back to the game! If you're a Sky Sports subscriber, you have no excuse not to watch all 48 Rugby World Cup 2011 games live. Because I'm giving you cupcakes a secret weapon. Ice Guy. You can watch every game and these fine rugby shows live and free on your computer. You will be watching on the beaches, in the streets. Hell, you can even watch from the latrines for all I care. And I care. Ice Guy. Outstanding. Jimmy White arrived in the Potteries needing a couple of victories to keep alive his hopes of making the playoffs in the PartyPoker.com Premier League of 2011. Well, so far, so good because he leads Ding Chen Wei by two frames to one. If he can sneak through the semi final and then beat Carter in the final, who knows? He could still Thank make it all the way frame. to the knockout phase of the tournament. Well, I'm sure that has given himself a lift on that clearance. But again, he hasn't played a good break-off shot. He's given Ding an immediate chance here. And he'd be frustrated if Ding knocks this in and makes something of it. Didn't take advantage. a glaring miss Mike well the crowd are playing every shot aren't they and it was that's better One. I wonder could we be going into our second shootout of the evening Well, these are the kind of situations in which Ding normally Safety. thrives. Fantastic in amongst the balls. Seven. Just looked a fraction wide there for one minute. Fourteen. Well, you'll definitely go into the pack here with pace. Well, he's playing top spin. Has he seen a little plant below the pink there? Must have done. I expected him to go into the pack there. Let's have a look at this one. 22. Well, it looks perfect. It's bob on. And he's on the page. Twenty three. And with three more reds loosened up. Twenty nine. Well, 
has left himself awkward on the intended red, but I think he's got a straight one to the yellow pocket. I think he might just be running into the black with this one, so he's taken the, the option of one into the other corner. Has he got it? Oh, just a touch wide. Kingsley Lee, 37. Well played, nice cannon. So they'll leave himself an angle on the black here to go into them. He wants these reds open. He knows this is a good chance to win the match. Left no. himself a little bit straight. That was careless. He's gone to nudge the red. There's the side. That's not bad. <laughs> the only thing is here, he can't get the right side of the blue. 16. But he could leave himself an angle on the blue to go in and out of bulk at the left-hand side of the pack. He's trying to get back for the black, I think. Well played. Can't tell you how good a shot that was, because there's hardly any angle to play there in those middle pockets. Now then, can he get them open? Unlucky. Well, there's still a pot on, but he just flicked them. Ready? Didn't get the arc on that cue ball to react fast enough. Well, you can see the reaction from Jimmy White there. He was so annoyed with himself. You know, he knows or knew Jimmy that White that was a great four. chance, and again, he's played a loose one. He's left in this red on. Just needs good queuing. He's been overcutting a lot of these kind of pots so far tonight. No problem with that one. Right, well, he's doing about to steal this one as well. I say steal it. He's 14 points in the lead, but. He could be going into another shootout. Especially where the Reds are now. Eight. No. For want of a better technical term, that right hand side cushion is extremely bouncy. It just floated the cue ball through off the black and it it went into the cushion and quickly off it. Fifty. Sixteen. Well, if he goes to a shootout, Ding has got every reason to be confident. He was involved in one of them up at the Ravenscraig Sports Facility in Motherwell. Evening number three of this year's tournament. And he won it in a single scoring visit with an 80 break to beat Sean Murphy 3-2. 24. That was some match between them, wasn't it? 90s, 100s, 80s, flying in all over the place. Great standard. He has five frames, and in Thursday. every single one of them, at least an 80 break was made. Not quite the standard in this match. Still, though, it's been quite entertaining. You never know when they're going to make a mistake. That's what's captivating everyone's attention. 37. doesn't matter now whether he makes a mistake or not the frame is in his pocket
51. 53. Well, I'm sure he's disappointed that he's going to have to go into a shootout. He had a good chance there, but just concentrate the mind in the next frame. 56. This has been similar to the first 16. match, actually, the first semi-final. Mike Williams is struggling early on, got back to two all. Unfortunately for him, he lost the final frame. 71. The highest break of the match. And the best break of the match. And with that, Ding draws back onto level terms. It's 2-2. Two -two. Now the rules change. It's a shootout. Ten minutes to decide who goes through to the final. And this is just a reminder of the rules that will now apply for the next ten minutes. It's a 20-second shot clock for the first five minutes and then 15 for the final five minutes. Every shot, a ball must make contact with a cushion or, of course, be potted. All fouls penalised with ball in hand. That can be brutal, and no time extensions are permitted. These are the shootout performances so far. Ding has played one, won one, and he won it impressively with an 80 break against Sean Murphy. Murphy's been involved in two of them. This is White's first experience because, of course, these first two outings in the PartyPoker.com Premier League of 2011. He lost 3-0, first at Skegness to John Higgins, then in Guildford to Mark Williams. Who do you fancy, Phil? Well, you have to think Ding, but it just goes to show how tight the league is this year. If he were to win the shootout and then beat Ali Carter in the final, he would actually go top of the table. If he were to lose this frame, I think... Qualifying for the semi-finals would be difficult. Amazing, isn't it? Absolutely amazing. That's so important. Not just one frame as Jimmy returns, but I'm sure Ding and, of course, the, both the boys will be aware of what their situations are. Well, for Jimmy White, it's very simple. He has to win the frame, otherwise he will not be at Hopton on C for the semi-final playoffs. They're lagging for the break. It's the cue ball that's closest to the bottom cushion that wins. Jimmy break, yeah wins the choice and Ding is deciding Jimmy White and the you break. Rules. Jimmy White to break yeah Ding won that one but he put uh, Jimmy into bat 10 minutes then here we go again 5 off shots from both players here have not been great. There's always been an opportunity, a nearly opportunity, to take on a red. Well, their performances, hey. respective performances, in the shootout in Blackpool last January, nothing to write home about. Both were beaten in the first round. No. Right by Ali Carter. Ding by... Dominic Dale. Ding and Dome. Could be a duet on TV, that. 13. Well, he's opening up here. He's going right through the pack. Great shot. 14. He had to use the red to the middle, but he chose to open one or two more. He's put himself right in pole position. And again, let's not forget, this was off Jimmy's break-off shot. He must get that white tied to that back. 21. Cushion. 21. I have to say, Mike, 22. in the early stages of the match, I thought Ding was rather nonchalant.
32. Quite amazing. He doesn't miss many of those. He's good under pressure, this kid, but... What a chance here for Jimmy. Known as one of the game's great rest players, requires the rest here. Twelve. Hmm, not quite sure of that one. I don't know if the black goes, I assume it does. He's looking at the blue. Blue ball. He missed that by the proverbial country mile, and the blue coming back into the bunch might well have left Dinga red. He certainly did, but he also is an out of position. Now I wonder, well, he might take the yellow on here. No, I think he's playing a safety off the blue. Oh, is he? He could be taking this on. Oh, great shot. I didn't fancy to take that on at this stage. Oh, clean as a whistle. Possibly Jimmy's Seven. chance gone with that Miss Blue, Phil. I don't think Ding will give this chance up. I'm not so sure. He's been very loose so far. Normally, I would agree with you, Mike. Twelve. Shot time's now 15 seconds. Well, he wasn't on, on that red. He was trying Thing to kick it 12. in. But he might have got away with it. Well, again, like the first match, this is all about the clock now. Well, there's only 22 points in it. If Jimmy can get in, he can score in that time. Well, things played in good white, but with the pace, but there is a chance. He's got to get this. Well, it could be over now. Actually, I'm just looking at it at second glance. It's not too bad as we watch the replay. He's covered the one on the right-hand side with the black. Got to hurry. Why would he three the pink there? What advantage is that? The bleeps. Under pressure. Again, that was about the clock. It's these lines are under pressure. But if this red goes in here, I think the match with Jimmy is over. Ding can control that clock. Oh, he's missed it by a long way. He's played with some check side though. Well, he's 22 behind. He's only got what three minutes. Does this red pass the other one into the corner? Is the room there? Well, 
I think this will be the beginning of the end now for Jimmy White in this one. see White coming back into this now, especially with the two reds on the side cushion. Even if he gets the chance. Yeah, well, Ding like Mike Williams didn't look 11. good at the beginning of the match, but he's got his act together here towards the end. 12. So, it will be Ding Junhui versus Ali Carter then in this evening's final. Nineteen. No way back from uh, Jimmy from here. Thank you. After this, the best that Y can do, if he wins 25. the final up in Grimsby, his last commitment in the tournament, is eight points. That will not be enough to go through we to the semi-final playoffs. Time isn't White's friend. <laughs> Someone hoping, saying, Come on, Jimmy. It's a physical impossibility. mistakes apart from the 78 break he put together in frame four it wasn't good stuff by the Chinese number one but nevertheless he wins 3-2 he's into the final against Ali Carter and White's hopes of making the playoffs have been dashed of Africa, or are the hosts ready for a cricketing wake-up call? Oh yes, here we go. Zimbabwe versus Black Cats, first 2020, Sunday live, Sky Sport 3. This party with a bag! When Johnny English picks up a pen, pick it twice, you know it's gonna be good. Ow. When Johnny Depp draws his sword, you know it's gonna be great. If Robert De Niro wants to hit a pillow, you better hit the ground. Feel better? Yeah, I do. If Dr. Lecter invites you over for dinner... Let's get something to eat. Why not? Please decline. I'm giving very serious thought to eating your wife. And when the pie is this warm, please refrain. We'll just tell your mother that we ate it all. <laughs> Where there's chocolate, there's a Charlie. Where there's Vin Diesel, you'll find petrol heads. And where there's a cat woman, yeah. there's bound to be a Batman. 
You are interesting. If it's Brad Pitt, there's a legend to be told. If it's Al Pacino, a legend has been found. We mean what we say on Sky Movies Greats. before the war, but now it's woken up and said goodbye to it. Seat time for your Octane action on the home of motorsports, Sky Sports. Oh, oh. Big crash! Look at that, he's ahead of it! Real drop it. Supreme skill we've seen this afternoon. Get into pole position for the ultimate motorsport lineup. Sky Sports, the home of motorsports. Delighted with it! Welcome back to PartyPoker.com Snooker Premier League. We have a final on our hands, and this is how we got there. Mark Williams was first up tonight against Ali Carter. Ali wearing his lucky socks, won the odd frame, 3-2. Booked his place in tonight's final, where he will meet Ding Junhui, who won by the same scoreline, 3-2 against Jimmy White. And as you can see, our final, Ding against Ali Carter. But all that means, this is how the league table currently stands. Before we've had our final, Ding in fifth place and Jimmy Sadly, it looks won't be in finals weekend, Mike Haller. And added incentive if you need it for tonight's two finalists, whoever wins goes top of the Premier League. Yeah, Jimmy would be really disappointed with that. He did have his chances there, he knows that. And just got in first, uh, those last two frames couldn't convert. And unfortunately, that's been a story of sort of the pattern of his game over the last few months. What did you make of Ding's performance tonight? Well, I think it's pretty similar to Mike Williams. Mike Williams didn't get off to a good start, and Ding was exactly the same, but he got stronger as the match got on. Of course, when he got presented with his chance, he took it very well. Mm. Tell me a bit about the final. What do we expect to see against two players that obviously uh, hit a bit of form? Yeah, I, I think we're in for a cracking final, actually. Uh, they, they both started pretty tentatively, but I think um, towards, the, towards the end of their matches, they've got their, their acts together, and I think this will be a quality match. I think, uh, apart from the century that Mike Williams has played, it's been the odd you know, smattering of good quality snooker, but it's been uh, good tense stuff out there, actually. So, looking forward to this final. You correctly predicted the result in the first <laughs> semi-final. Bang on the money. Well played, you. Prediction for this one, for the final? Oh God. Go on, and I'm going to go Ali 3-2. Ali 3-2, OK. Uh, before we go to a break, when the final is coming straight after that, uh, just time to remind you that you can also see the World Seniors Championships live on Sky Sports, November the 5th and 6th. It's a weekend on Sky Sports HD4. You're not in that can, one, Mike? Can I, have a, can I have a recount on that one? <laughs> they begged <laughs> me to that, do that, that one. Welsh I do apologise. Darren Morgan beat me last week. So, so close. Always the bridesmaids. We're going to have a quick break. When we come back, it's the final of tonight's Premier League. See you in a sec. Kucher. He's the real deal. He definitely paid his dues. Kucher. Love Matt. He's a really good guy. Several wins, top tens. He's the most consistent golfer. A family man. He's a really down to earth, very genuine, compassionate. He showed a lot of class. Plays the game like you're supposed to play it. 
seems to really like his fans. He's one of the best I've ever seen with fans. Winning wins, really feel like uh, you're winning too. Years I pretended to be married. I know how wrong it is, but there's no strings attached and nobody gets hurt. My wife beats me in front of my kids. <gasps> no. I swear to God, I could see myself ending up with this girl. Did you say what I think you just said? And how about I take your number and you can take me on a proper date? I got a business card in my pocket. What's this? A circle. Just tell her the truth. Well, let me practice. You be her. Oh, good. Okay, hold on. I wear this fake wedding ring. Here, pig. I, uh... Just tell her you're getting a divorce. It's over. Okay, I just need to hear it from her. How about if she texts you? Would that be good? cannot believe I'm doing this. I want to create the illusion I had a hot first wife. Not really? this. Okay, come on, let's go. Is that her? I think so. Well, look at you two. I give you my blessing. I have to tweet to all my friends. Oh, gosh, I forgot. You're 15. <laughs> Did you just kick me? No. Did you? Why'd you kick her? Hello? Honey, you know how I feel about you selling your brother's stuff. You have kids? We have sort of a, a little bit of a little bit of children. Adam Sandler. Let's do it! Jennifer Aniston. My kids? Have you completely lost your mind? How would you like to be my pretend children? Take me to Hawaii so I can swim with the dolphins. Ain't gonna happen. Find someone else then. Yeah, I created fake family for that. Give me some fake hugs right now and laugh real loud. <laughs> I'll see you in a minute, okay? <laughs> Just go with it. How long were you two married? Uh, ten Eight years. Ten Eight. years. Very, oh, very long. long time. Just go with it. Now showing on Sky Box Office. One born every minute, Sunday, exclusive to Vibe. All season long, the Hyundai A-League, live only on Sky Sports. Welcome back to the PartyPoker.com Premier League snooker final. Ding Jing Wee against Ali Carter. Time to get the players back out again. And first up, it's the captain. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and very warm welcome back to our final here in Stoke on Trent. It's the PartyPoker.com Premier League Snooker, brought to you by Matchroom Sport, and we are coming to you live on Sky Sports HD. Well, it's time now to meet our players. Would you please welcome the player who is simply known as the captain, Ali Carter. is the wonderful Ding Jing Roy. And ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome back China's number one, Ding Jong Hui! Join our boys in the box once again for tonight. Mike Hallett and Phil Yates. Ali, Thank you, Andy. It is Mike Hallett predicted a Ali Carter victory in the final. 
And I have to say, if they play as they did in the semi-finals, first frame, I would agree with Mike Ding wholeheartedly. Will Ding will need to improve. And a prize <laughs> for the winner. Whoever wins this match leaves the Biddle Valley Leisure Centre at the top of the Premier League table. And if Carter could win with 10 points from two outings, he'd be looking really good for the playoffs. So close. I think he's covered it though. Doesn't want this touching. Touching ball. Well, I can just put this to the top cushion. These two have already met in the tournament, of course, in the semi-finals at the Dome in Doncaster a couple of weeks ago, and Carter was inspired. Won 3-0, breaks of 30, 44, 50, 70 and 91. In fact, he won 3 0 in less than half an hour. Well, it was a chance, it wasn't easy. I should pop this one in. It's just a question of negotiating the white through the ball colours. <coughs> It's OK, he's on the yellow. And we could clean up those two reds at that end of the table and concentrate on things this end. It was a good win for Ali there against Mark Williams in that Great. semi-final, Phil. I'm sure that now he fancies the job. He knows, as you've just said, that he would be at top of the league. Four. If he can win this, either boy will be, of course. But he really controlled that um, shootout frame against Mark Williams. And Carter needs a confidence boost because it's not been the best of starts to the season for him. No. He did reach the final of the Wuxi Classic, an invitation event in China, actually in Ding's home province, lost 9-7 to Mark Selby there teamed up with Selby for England in the World Cup in Thailand. They were one of the favourites for the title, but they were beaten in the quarterfinals. And in the two major world ranking events we've had so far in the campaign, he's lost his opening match. Australian Open to Marcus Campbell. Shanghai Masters to Mark King. 17. And he's not done a great amount in the Players Tour Championship Series either. This is awkward. No, well done. Good recovery. Still got that red in bolt though. 18. <laughs> 23. Do an angle on the blue here, which he has. I'm just slow down a little bit. Well, he's going to touch far. He might have to power this in off a couple of cushions. Top and right hand side here. I don't know whether he can play the power stun into them. Well, that's a good shot from there. And that's not bad. 29. Just pop this red in and get onto the black. Hardly any angle, but he found one. Oh, 
Well, that was clean as a whistle. That's great for you. Knight played to split them here because he's guaranteed to be on that red. Clever shot. A debutant in this year's Premier League. But I think he's enjoying himself. Yes, as I mentioned earlier, he's been wanting to play in this tournament for quite some time now. And when he won the Shanghai Masters, what was it now? 14 months ago, Barry Hearn said, 44. Yes, you're in. Forty-five. Again, just needed a touch more angle. Unless he plays on the red to the right middle. I think he might play another power stun shot again here, just right to the pink. Well, he's moved one, and that's OK. Twice he's played that shot, and he's played them both very well. 51. If anything, he's just landed a little bit straight on this black. There's still some angle there, though. Decided to hold for that red to the middle. Not too far away from the winning line here in this opening frame of tonight's final. Fifty-nine. Well, he needs this black and one more red. Well, 66. Okay, I'll send another seat to be had, but there's a few there. But they've, they've gone outside actually just to uh, get a little bit of pressure or something. It's quite warm in here this evening. And they'll be back after this frame, I'm sure. They won't want to wa miss the climax of this one. Mm. Ali already done the damage here in this opening frame. He's looking good. Seventy-four. Well played. Seventy-five. And the century's still on there. He could post the highest break here this evening. Mark Williams had a one-one-five. <coughs> yes, beat Williams in the semi-finals and 82. could add insult to injury, depriving the Welshman of a thousand pounds. 83. I was saying that Carter's made a slow start of the season. An indication of that is that he's only made three centuries so far. Ronnie O'Sullivan tops the century chart in the 20s already. 89. Oh, not the perfect angle to nudge the red off the cushion. Might leave himself the cross double. Yes, cross double to the right centre then. 96. Oh, what a pity. And he, and he thought he might have potted it, so did I, but it wasn't quite there. No century, no high break for the evening. But Ali Carter gets the final off to a quality start. He leads Ding 1-0.
F1 Korea. Today, live Sky Sport 3. The Arctic, a place too hostile for humans. Yet four million live there. Here, they remember the old ways. It's one of the largest predators in these seas. The time-honored techniques. If he strikes too soon, the whole park will die. The ancient secrets. Human Planet, tonight, Prime. The Silver Fern is like a dream come true, and I'm just one of the shining stars amongst the rest. The power of the fern. The power of the fern. Is what drives me. Is what drives us. Diamond Silver Ferns, October 23rd, live Sky Sport. Welcome back to the final of the PartyPoker.com Premier League Snooker, week number six from the Biddulph Valley Leisure Centre here in the Potteries. Ali Carter has taken the first frame in convincing fashion with a break of 96. Thank you, ladies and gents. The second frame, Ali Carter for break. Just to reiterate, the winner of this match mathematically guaranteed to move to the top of the table. Well... Most of the players this evening, a shake of the head, because he knows he's left a chance here. He's got the white closer to that back cushion, but you've got to be behind the green. This is a chance. is back in action next week at the Riverside Centre in Exeter up against Judd Trump. Close there. Yeah, I think he thought that was in. So did we. But he has covered it with another red. Yes, Carter also plays in Banbury in November against John Higgins in the semi-finals there. As for Ding, only one more appearance. He's slated to meet Neil Robertson at the Guildhall in Southampton. I think the last qualifying evening will be a real treat up at the Grimsby Auditorium. Judd Trump takes on Sean Murphy in one match. Ronnie O'Sullivan meets Jimmy White in another. Well, it was a risky one to take on. Not easy. It wasn't too far away. Now, can he cut this back? He's gone for the double. And he's got the red, but he's what? lost the cue ball. He'll be disappointed to leave him right there. Some of Ding's fans there in the crowd urging him on. Ding Junhui, one. That's a good touch there. I think he's got Ali Snooker and all of the reds. Just into the side of the pack then. Has he got there? Foul and a miss. Thing John we for. Well, when the reds are so tightly bunched, you don't really need to be that precise. There's no plant on here, Phil. 
Well, you thought there was. on the yellow would have been nice don't know whether they would take this on I wouldn't have thought so yellow one mm. Ali Carter one this is a KG second frame too thin and he, this could have been a lot worse actually I to watch the replay could have easily left one on the right hand side but he hasn't covered him but he's going to crack at this one on the left slight angle to get onto the black oh, he's still through with the white but white. unfortunately for him he's left that white close to the side cushion there's just a little bit of pressure on this one now especially when you're one behind and best of five Well done. Great pop. Well, example for you youngsters at home there. He was totally committed on that shot. Eight. And technically speaking, the head remained down. Nine. The big fundamental in snooker is the same as in golf. You have to keep your head down on the shot. Sixteen. Not good. He just landed on nothing. Surprised he didn't go in with a little bit more power. Twenty four. I don't think there's anything on there. Well, can he kick that one in with a little bit of the left-hand side? No. <coughs> Ding Junhui, 24. <coughs> well, that's loose. I thought he'd left the red over the middle for a minute. But it's still loose because he should have got that white to that back cushion. This is another chance here. Just a good pot. He could be in. Well, he played with the element of safety. He's left alley a similar shot on. Seem to bounce a little bit that. We know about Carter's win over Ding in Doncaster in the semi finals up there a couple of weeks back. Carter also beat Ding 5 2 in the quarter finals of the Welsh Open earlier this year last season and so although Ding has got bundles of talent Carter's got no reason to be frightened by it well, he's caught that all wrong hang on uh, just far too thick on the red
Well, no, they must go into them here. It's got the perfect angle on the blue, but um, black's down the table, pink out of commission. Oh, he's played on the loose one at the back. <coughs> Needs a good shot to get back for the blue, though. Six. Well, this has got to go in, because he's never up everything else. <coughs> Ali Carter, six. Well, I say, you must get those if you're going full-blooded. Well, position on the colour was always going to be very difficult, but at least if he'd potted a red, he could have played safe off the colour. Well, that's the reason, Phil, when I said, why doesn't he go into the pack from the blue? Because if he was always going to leave that white low, he had problems. One. Could have gifted this frame to Ding Zhongwei. Wee. Well, normally I would say he has done. Ding, though, so far tonight has been a little lax. Three. Four. Loose one. He wanted a four ball contact on that red. Fifteen. Well, there's Pat Crowd here watching on intently. Who's going to win this final? Sixteen. This you would expect Ding to level things up here. takes Ding 49 points ahead 51 on the table for Carter and so the blue is frame ball he's done the calculation and that's really to make sure it would mean whether Ali Carter comes back to the table or not well, I uh, can't see it now. 33. So, Ali went full-blooded then to open up those reds, and it's cost him dear. We're trying to steer the red off the cushion there. He wasn't too happy with that one. Cross double. He's done enough. 38 and a frame, Ding Jinwei. You failed to pot a ball in the first frame of the final, but Ding comfortably wins the second. We're all level at one frame each. Still plenty of snooker left in the league phase of this tournament. This is night number six. After this, we go to the Riverside Centre in Exeter. Ali Carter's back in action against Judd Trump. Neil Robertson up against Sean Murphy. That's next week. Then we go to Southampton. Banbury, where Carter's again playing against John Higgins. And then finally, that mouth-watering evening at Grimsby. Sean Murphy against Judd Trump. Ronnie O'Sullivan, the defending champion, up against Jimmy White. And the semi-finals and final will be played at Hopton-on-Sea in late November.
Well, I think under this format, Mike, we expected it mm. to be very tight for qualifying places who would make those semi-final playoffs. And right now, it's absolutely wide open, the table. It is. It is. I don't think Ali would be too happy with that shoddy player there to allow Ding in, but Ding took full advantage. But uh, this is a mighty frame for both of them here. You know, they'll put them one away from victory. OK. Thank you, the third frame. This match, important for both. Break. More important for Ding because this is his third outing of the tournament where Carter's only making his second appearance. Mind you, with semi-finals coming up against Judd Trump and John Higgins, he needs to make hay while the sun shines. It's a quality field and it's tough. Big mistake there. Never done that slightly, left himself a real tough pot now. He's the wrong side of the red, the white's near the cushion, Six. and there's no way he can get on the black. He's trying to drop it in dead weight to stay on the black at the table, and the fast, but he's just got it. Seven. That wasn't a bad shot from where he was, but this black now much tougher. You see a player go into the pack there, but he's played the percentage and it's only the best of five, so he, he wanted to just get the extra seven points. Can't blame him. Ali Carter, 14. table has got a little bit quicker as the night has progressed. It's running lo lovely now. It's very responsive. As you said, Mike, it's warm in the arena. And yet again, the Premier League has come up trumps in terms of attracting a capacity crowd. Week in, week out, we get the audiences coming to see these top stars. They see them on TV, but they want to see them up close. And it's been a very responsive and knowledgeable crowd here this evening when frame balls have gone in. They've applauded um, on good shots as well. So they know their snooker. And crowds make a tournament. For me, the most interesting event of the entire 2010-2011 season was the German Masters in Berlin, and that was because for virtually every session, 2,000 people turned out. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. The two lads in the final, they came out like rock stars. Well, it's been 14 years since they had a major tournament there. They weren't going to miss it. Part of our main calendar, of course. That's coming back up around about March time, I think.
Well, he had to negotiate the cue ball through the gap. He didn't want that. Didn't get enough side on the cue ball. And the black and pink not in ideal positions. I think it might be the blue to the top corner. Well, he folded us all there. Things in we one. I thought he was taking that to the corner. <laughs> Sorry, lads. Another mistake. This time from Ding Junhui. It's been a strange old evening to try and categorise. We've seen some excellent snooker, some very poor snooker, and a lot of middle of the road stuff. Time extension. Again, having to drop it in dead weight to stay on One. the black. That's a terrific shot. Great queuing. He is queuing well tonight, Ali Carter. There's no doubt about that, but he needs to make an impact here with this opportunity. Eight. That defies belief. One of those shots where he was just thinking purely and simply about position and completely forgot the main objective, knocking in the red. Yeah, he's getting back for the black there. He tried to create an angle that really wasn't there. And it could be very costly. Seven. Well, he ran out of position trying to cut that red Think back, but seven. it's not a bad second shot. Little fortunate, didn't play that, but he'll take it. Couldn't think of anything else. If in doubt, lash out. He's actually got the cue ball some distance away from the reds. He still needs a good pot. It's been a while since I've seen Ding make as many mistakes as he has done tonight in all departments. Yet, yeah, daft as it seems, he could still win this final. Time extension. None left this frame. Carter taking his second time extension of the frame. None left. Well, it was worth the wait. One. That across the ball cushion was a good part. 
5. Six. These cushions are flying now. Yeah, it's, it's very warm in the arena, and of course you've got the undertable heaters as well, so they are bouncing a little bit, more so towards the end of the evening. But it really is playing well now, the table, but um, look at the position of the balls. They need sorting out. This has definitely got faster as the evening has gone on. No. If you do get too much heat underneath them, they do tend to bounce a little bit. You can find a happy medium. There's a gauge Ten. underneath the table to keep some of a certain temperature. We've got pads actually, we used to have little pipes underneath, four or five pipes. Now they've got pads with the electrodes which generate the heat, keep the slate warm. Blue ball. Alicada 10. The player wanting to give anything away here, understandable. Such a big match for these two. Whoever wins, they know that this is just about going to guarantee them a semi final spot there at the end of November. He's got away with that a little bit because he did hit that red thick. That's better. And he's nice on the pink as well. Now what? Again, one of the game's superior Seven. positional players finding himself in no man's land for no apparent reason. Eight. Yeah, he, he had options there, Phil, didn't he? It wasn't too bad, actually, where the reds are. But I know what you mean. Five minutes ago, it was an awkward table. Now there's only one awkward red. Ten. And even that is in close proximity to a pocket. Eleven. Eighteen. Nineteen. With the black, Ding will hit the front in this frame. Twenty six. Well, I had the uh, initial chance, but unbelievably missed that dead straight red. Twenty seven. Trying to get onto the black. Start to be mocked up, but all he has to do is get behind that red on the side cushion. 34. Although the blue's not on its spot, he could do with a little bit of an angle on that final red, just get out for the pink or the black. 35. I think, uh, well, is he going too straight here? Well, if he's dead straight, it's okay, he just comes straight back onto the cushion, no problem. But he doesn't want to leave the red straight, just a little bit of an angle would be perfect. Well, he has, which now means he's got to go down for one of the bulk colours. 42. It's looking difficult to get this cue ball away from that cushion. And if he plays this with power, we've seen these missed. Well done. 
Got enough action on the white to go down for the brown. Or well, the yellow still has the blue. Always remember when he beat Stephen Hendry in the final of the 2005 China Open when he was only 18 years of age. His big breakthrough, he potted some phenomenal balls down the side cushions. Well, needs to run on because the yellow comes back up. He's on the yellow, not the green. That's a poor shot. 21 the lead. He still needs yellow and green. He's out of position here. I hope he didn't have a brain freeze there and think he was playing on the green. I'm sure he didn't. He's got to play a good shot here. Well, there you go. Oh, he's been fortunate. He's got the snooker. Ding Junhui, 45. 45 for Ding Junhui, but there's still a chance here for Ali Carter. That was a poor positional shot there to get back onto the yellow. He has Ding at 21 ahead. Yellow and green needed to leave Carter requiring a snooker. There's the cue ball. Yeah. Still an outside outside chance here for Ali. Ding Jun Wee. That was one of those anomalies, wasn't it? Before Ding potted the yellow. Carter needed six pots. His opponent knocked in a ball and now he needs five. He's got to get this safe, though. In behind the pink. Well, what about that one? <laughs> Unbelievable. So, you know, when you've just seen it all at this game, something else crops up. We keep saying it, Phil, don't we? For all the skill factor, Lady Luck does play its part. Foul and a miss. Ali Carter, four. And I think that might go back. Didn't miss it by much. Okay. Mm -hmm. Exactly the same. And I think well, we're having the white put back again here. Foul. And a miss. Ali Carter, four. That was almost a carbon copy. I'm just wondering, Phil, if this green passes the blue into the corner. That's the reason the white's travelled, and but it does. Okay. I'm thinking if uh, you know if this time, if Ding gets this a little bit on the slow side and leaves the green on, then Ali will take the green on. Well, he's played it slower, but this could be a free ball. That's an awful shot. That's a definite uh, free ball. Miss. The white in hand now, Ali. Three misses. White hand. Yeah. If you wanted to. Yes, that's the rule in Premier League snooker. If you make three misses out of a snooker, yeah. it's the white in hand. And we know that the green goes past the blue. Okay, I think the crowd are a little bit confused by that as well. <laughs> but uh, as the, the white would have been in the D, of course, in hand. But it's no good where the green is. Well, that's amazing. He's got Zach at the same angle. Hang on, hang on. Ah, well, there you go. More than one way to skin a cup. He was fortunate there, Ding, because being able to put the cue ball in the D was of no advantage to Carter. He's got another one, though. It's full ball. I'm right down the line of this one. Ding will have to come off the back cushion here. Now then, where are these balls going to finish? That seems OK. I'm not sure that is cuttable. Tell you what, Phil, a tense evening of a snooker. Good 
escape. to play a little swerve here around the blue. Oh, nearly. Carter 11 points behind, so if he pots green to pink, Dink could still force a respotted black by potting the black. Of course, Dink. Glad that that black is near the side cushion. He's given himself half a chance here. It'll be all about pink to black. Seven. He's just overdone that slightly. I wonder if he might just attempt to nudge the black off the cushion here, leave himself pink to the middle. Could do. We've got to get the blue first. He needs that blue to slow down. It's gone over the corner. Ali Carter seven. And Ding, four ahead, needs just blue, which is a formality, and pink. That's not good. He played Five. on the middle pocket, but he's still taking it there, this to the left centre. Well, amazing. Didn't need the black. Ding, five. When was the last time you saw Ding miss a shot like that for frame? Well, when was the last time you saw him play a positional shot like that as well? Well, he chose to try and pot the pink, leave himself the long black. Plenty of chances but towards the end of this frame. This again, frame ball then. This third frame still not decided. Well, he's got to play the pink across here, white up and down. He should avoid the black. Got a quarter ball on the pink. A little bit pacey, but at least he's got the pink in a good position. <laughs> Trying to get in behind the black there. But he's left it slightly awkward. I don't think Ali will go for this. I think he'll play the safety. Can he get the cue in there? He could do. He might go for this if he can cue it properly. Now, where's that cue ball? Foul. And and now, six. Carter needs a snooker. Well, he chose to go for it. And he paid the penalty with the white going in there. Well, uh, doesn't matter now, it's all over. Well, wasn't that a messy frame? Ding leads 2-1. Don't ask me how. It's the precursor to the Four Nations, a one-off test match between old rivals, the Kangaroos and the Kiwis. And when such opportunities arise, it can only mean one thing, Rugby League mayhem. Can you believe this? Can a star-studded Kangaroos reassert their mark against our world champion Kiwis? The Kangaroos versus Kiwis, live Sky Sport 2.
CSI New York. It's a good location to commit murder. A new season on the box. Things just got a lot more difficult. And a lot more dangerous. It's not safe. It's not secure. Death by knife, death by fire. In this city, there are many ways to lose your life. I smell bad flesh. I'll shoot you if you see ladies first. And one way to catch the killer. Positive for blood. Plenty of it. CSI New York, back to back. 8.30 Monday on The Box. Welcome back to a lengthy evening at the PartyPoker.com Premier League Snooker. It's week number six. Ding Wei leads Ali Carter 2-1. One. one more frame needed to win the final and move to the top of the table. He's committed a whole series of mistakes. Thank He's played some shots frame. that defied belief. Ali Carter to break. And me scratching my head. But here he is on the verge of doing what he wanted to do and get six points from the evening. Get them two cushions just in the back of the pack. start of the evening Andy Goldstein suggested to Ali Carter he said if I give you four points from the night would you take it there was a slight hesitation as though to say well maybe and four points might be what he's going to get if he loses this frame it will be first chance though goes to the Englishman yeah always a problem if you catch uh, those middle knuckles That's not good. I don't think he's on the black. Can he get through there? Ooh, that's tight. But I think he's just okay. Time extension. Ali Carter one. Looked quite smooth at the beginning of the evening. Just wanted to mistakes creeping in here. The wrong time for Ali. I'm sure he's thinking about what this match one. You know, is worth to him. better Ding Jun we six Just avoided the blue. Well, too thin there. Doesn't seem to be too bad, though.
Well, Carter played the double, presumably Five. thinking he wouldn't leave a lot. What he left was a plant. Big mistake. Again, that could have been better, but he does have this red down to the green pocket. He could come back for the black. He was looking at something else, but I think this one straight to the green pocket is the ball. Here we go. Well played. He's got a slight angle on the black here to get out for the red as well. That was clean as a whistle. For me, that's his best shot of the night. What a chance this is. 14. Fifteen. Suddenly seems a lot more focused. I said suddenly he seems more focused suddenly 36. the control of the cue ball for which he's renowned 36. is back at this visit he seemed like a totally different player Fifty-two. Still needs two reds here. Red, black, red would be enough. Fifty-three. I thought I'm sure Ali Carter will be very disappointed here this evening because he has had his chances. He played quite well against Mike Williams, controlled that final frame in the shootout, but there's been too many mistakes in this final, I'm afraid. <laughs> well, crowd are clapping, but he still needs one more red. Sixty. And he's left this a little bit short, but he should get this. Well done. In this frame, the lights came on. Great shot. Well, this is more like it. And he's produced it just 66. at the right time. Took him a while to get there. Ah, oh, will he come back to the table? He has the the match season, Two weeks ago, he lost 3-1 in the final in Doncaster. The same fate for Ali Carter tonight. Ding wins the evening overall. He's played a lot better than that, but he got the desired result. Yeah, another week in the Premier League and another new winner. There's confirmation of all our results from tonight. Semi-finals, obviously, is where we started. Mark Williams lost by the odd frame against Ali Carter 3-2. It's the same scoreline in the other semi. Ding Junhui 
just pepped in the whirlwind, Jimmy White 3-2. And uh, Ding Junhui winning this week by three frames to one. That means this is how the Premier League currently stands. That win for Ding, as we said earlier, whoever won tonight would go top. And Ding has done just that with ten points. Williams in second place with nine, level with Stevens, And defending champion, the Rocket, Ronnie O'Sullivan, on eight points. And uh, before we go, a reminder of when we're back. Uh, next Thursday, same place, same time, half past seven on Sky Sports HD1. You can see Ali again in action against Judd Trump and Neil Robertson against Sean Murphy. Half past seven on Sky Sports HD1. That's it. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, have a lovely seven days, and we see you soon. Bye for now. all five Sky Sports channels on your mobile and online with SkyGo.